Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Um, first the worst, second the best. I hope so, Peyton. Are you guys getting ads right now? I didn't insert one. There shouldn't be ads. Fingers crossed the internet unfucked itself. Yeah, Christine, me too. I did, um, you know, unplug it and plug it back in. Ooh, thank you. Sorry, Discord. Um, I did unplug it and plug it back in, and uh, it was hot, actually, Christine. So, um, excellent pickup. Um, I propped it up on something so that it has better ventilation. I closed all of the blinds. I turned the air conditioning down, and I put a fan in the room <laughs> to waft cold air onto it. So, if it still is not working, I literally don't know what to do. <laughs> mm hmm The footage does seem better to me, too. The internet seems slightly better than it was before. Fingers crossed that it doesn't go down in quality over time. <laughs> but, you know. I know. And during Pride Month, really, Verizon? Homophobic. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hi, Alex. Thanks for coming back, everybody. Yes, Christine. Time to start stitching. <laughs> Peyton. All right. I know, Golden Wanderer, it's so annoying. Um, okay. Uh, you know, we're going to give it a hot sec, actually, so that more people can filter in. Uh, you're giving the router more TLC. No, literally, Christine, that's what I'm saying. I'm, like, actively setting up an ideal environment for that little router. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hi, nobody. Thanks for coming back. I was looking at my Verizon app before I... Um, went live just to see like what the fuck is the deal um and it literally is like great connection are you sure are you sure about that i am so annoyed uh yeah this says uh great connection like literally no literally it's not verizon yeah i'm gonna open a support request for why you guys hate me not you guys verizon i mean um hi marissa thanks for coming you had to start a new stream because your internet and i had to reconnect with bluetooth headphones and listen while my spouse takes a nap that worked out then rachel i love that for us um am i talking to nobody <laughs> i hope i'm not talking to nobody uh no captain casey i'm so sorry um i should rachel i really should um, can you join Discord through the YouTube membership? No, only through Patreon um, are bored in. So the uh, Patreon and the Discord are like linked together. Um, and then the channel memberships are just for vibes, which is why the price points are so different. Um, but also because Patreon has like um, an integrated little thing. Um, Patreon like links them together for you. And so it makes it much easier for folks to connect the two in theory anyways um had to come watch the second bit after popping in yesterday for the very first bit very interesting Ooh, tune link i'm glad you're here i've heard that this episode is supposed to be more triggering than yesterday so uh thoughts and prayers for that um ba -ba -ba. our internet sucks here too and it's been crashing like 10 times a day yes marissa like what is that all day yesterday it was um shitting itself too look it's doing it again it's literally doing it again I'm going to lose my mind. Why are you doing this? Like, literally, whatever. Um, I always, <laughs> yeah, the internet's always like, I have a great connection to nothing. Literally. It literally is doing that. Uh, okay. I petted my kitty and got some apple crisps. Ooh, and a Coke. That sounds so yummy, Natasha. I love that. Um, yeah, the Patreon is also just a really fun place to hang out. We do live streams. Once a month where we play video games and we do little group hangs. Um, not last month, but the month before we watched um, a TV show together and just like generally hung out. It's a, it's a cool time. So um, highly recommend. Cat, uh, we are on episode three today. Uh, we're like six minutes in. I'm probably going to rewind a little bit to like 545. Um but we are uh, five minutes, 45 seconds into episode three because we watched episodes one and two yesterday. Um, and the replays of that are up on my channel, but they do have the overlay on them. So um, I binged it yesterday and wasn't triggered because I knew all of this from Fundy Fridays. That's super fair, Amy. Yeah, I've heard a lot of folks um, 
say that there's not necessarily new information in this per se, um, which we talked yesterday about how I'm glad, though, that they did edit it together in the way that they did because um, it does make a very impactful uh, or like very like emotionally impactful um, thing. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ooh, you have finals. Uh, YouTube is being so mean. Here I am just wanting an excuse to procrastinate on my finals. I feel that. Ooh, hi, Hannah. Uh, thanks for coming. We just had to reset the internet, um, or just like end the stream and start a new one because my internet shit itself. So it's going great. It's going so good. I'm such a professional influencer. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Uh, we're at 5.45 um, in episode three. Um, <laughs> I think that's all of our notes of order. I did give all of the um, caveats. Sorry, caveats last time. Um, so those still stand. Uh, <laughs> let's do the thing. All right, 5.45, uh, pressing play in three, two, one. Watched your wedding. It was the highest rated show at that time that TLC had ever had. The day before we got married, I signed a contract. I just saw the signature page. It was like on the end of the kitchen table, like, hey, we just need you guys to sign these. Like, everybody was signing them. We were literally running through the kitchen, and it was like whoever you could grab on the way through. Like, I didn't know what it was for. Like, this is so manipulative. My dad. What we found out later was that it was a commitment of your life for the next five years to the show. They had their negotiations. They had their business meetings. It just wasn't with us. We were just told when to be there, what was going on, what we needed to do. That's we had up. taken a couple pregnancy tests earlier, and we're expecting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 30 days into your marriage, oh you find out you're actually. Tomorrow's our one month anniversary. So a few weeks out from the birth, the production company, they're like, hey, so we're thinking about the birth. Are you good with us, like, being just, like, one person there, like, early labor? And I was like, well, actually, we don't want you guys there at all. <laughs> they're like, like, at all? <laughs> like, and they're, like, shocked. Like, what? Oh, whoa. Ah! You don't want to go through what oh. Anna went through. We're having a baby right here in the bathroom. Yeah. Here's your baby, here's your baby. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh. I knew for That's sure, I was like, up, nobody's man. in my delivery room. Like, nobody, and nobody's there for the labor watching me. Like, I don't want any of that. That's valid. It is 3.43 in the morning, and my water broke. I was really we basically lost, and they're gonna get what they want. They gave us cameras, you know, and they're like, wow. you guys shoot. Well, we've been laboring for a couple days now, and it's Monday. We did diary cams. Oh, we yeah, did, on the tripod. Yeah. We did a lot of work. So they still got, you know, the footage. That's fucked up. The women and girls in this family, they are really the draw of that show. When they have more babies, that's how they get a lot of their viewership, which is actually really similar to the Kardashians. Oh but the difference is that the Kardashians are getting remuneration for their participation in the show. Well, the Duggar women are doing the labor, literally <laughs> doing the labor, but they're really uh -huh. being shut out of who has the money and who has the power. After Israel's birth, we asked TLC to pay us enough just to cover what our out-of-pocket costs were for health insurance for Israel's birth. They said they paid the family. Paid the family means we don't get anything at that point. I said, well, we paid your dad, so take it up with him. Oh my God. 19 kids and counting. Yeah, I just want to pause and talk about this. Um, yeah, we've been laboring is a choice of words, first of all. Um, but second of all, this um, pretty blatant attempt at manipulation um, and like lying. Um, omitting the truth and not being 100% clear about what all is taking place is still lying, in my opinion. Um, and so Jim Bob putting this contract out on the counter for them to sign and just saying, like, you know, whatever, don't worry about it, only to find out that it's a commitment to film for the next five years and that Jill has no choice in being forced to film her own birth is so coercive. Um, TLC is the bad place. My God. Um, 
it will issue. I think the other thing, too, is that it's not just that she had to have her birth recorded and have her privacy invaded, but also that they had to do it um, in order for them to reach any amount of compromise to, to preserve any level of privacy. They had to commit to like working extra, basically. Um, I don't know if, if you guys have ever tried to like film something from start to finish, like in a sort of vlog format, but it's actually a lot of fucking work. It's very difficult, um, to like remember, to make sure that you're getting the shots right, to make sure that you're like creating a clear through line and a clear storyline and to be doing that while you're in like just uh, life shattering amounts of pain. I literally cannot imagine. Like I can't remember to vlog like a fucking vacation from start to finish, let alone a life changing event that's like incredibly painful. I feel so bad that this happened to her and that people accuse them of being like these money hungry, you know, like gold digging people. Like literally all they wanted was to have their violation of their privacy at least turn out to be profitable enough to cover their childbirth bills. Um, ooh, Arkansas just made new child labor laws. Um, that should be a thing. Um, like across the nation, I mean. Uh, I wonder what they would do if they didn't go along with it. I'm not sure, Natasha. I feel like they probably would have gotten sued. Um, because I mean, that's the whole point of the contract is that like we can do something about this if you don't comply, right? Um, yes, the simulation. Those contracts should have been declared null and void because there was no informed consent. Um, I'm just blown away. I guess I'm not like surprised necessarily because this is very normal in this community. Um, but it's still disgusting. The fact that her dad is like literally exploiting his children for fame and money and then turning around and being like, what? I don't see what the problem is. Like <laughs> fucking hello. And also, yeah. And you're not even going to pay them. You're going to exploit your children for fame and money. And you're not even going to give them a cut. <laughs> like what the fuck? The greed is unmatched. Okay, we're at 8.47. Uh, we're going to press play in three, two, one. Thing ...was a juggernaut for that network. So it's not like the money wasn't there. It is normal for the father to take all the money because the wife doesn't get it. The children don't get grand it. They're a under season? the authority, so of course he has it. Ooh. In the whole run of your time being a star, do you ever get a distribution? Mm -mm, no. I never received any payout. No check, no cash, no nothing. Wow. For seven and a half years of my adult life, I was never paid. I'm just amazed at what can get done with a group of children that are willing to work. And every one of those children were out there sweating and working and some of the hardest working people you will ever meet. It was Do they have a choice, Michelle? that you would serve for the benefit of serving alone. Yeah. There are many, many ministry opportunities that are out there for your sons and daughters and we want you to avail yourself. These families, they had loving parents who wanted the best for their kids, but who still believed my son, my daughter can go work at any of the different programs that's offered under this giant IBLP umbrella. The programs that you could participate oh my God, the in new law, range from Ar a week Arkansas or two, like a summer camp, all the way to the fuck? several I'm months, I guess. to several years if you were working in the training centers. At the training centers, it's usually kids in their late teens, early 20s, who would be going to college, but have basically been convinced that college is a useless waste of humanism brainwashing. What parents didn't realize is what they were signing their kid up to were horribly long hours, where they would be working 15, 16 hours a day. Good God. So Gothard's like, hey, have your kids join my homeschool program, and then afterwards, uh -huh. send them to work for me for free. When Josh was away at the IBLP facility, they were doing construction work there. Yeah, that was one of his punishments. Yeah. We were expected to help with the conferences, the work to set up, tear down. Entire civic centers would be transformed into these IBLP oasises with the red Jesus. carpets and the potted plants. Gothard loved some potted plants. <laughs> this was manual labor what? being performed by children. And this was not an uncommon thing. This was everywhere. It is almost impossible to describe what IBLP looks like. It's in every home, but there's a headquarters 
and then there's all the training centers all over the place and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger more and more and more programs so there's like one training center for character first and then there's one for excel and then there's one for commit and there's one for telos and there's one for alert and there's one for verity and sound foundations and oh all these different branches that they have and each one functions a different way and they're everywhere it's super confusing bill gothard loves axe carrier mm. hold on pause i want to address this too because i think this is such a useful um point that she brought up that like the purpose of the why is my stream buffering again why is my stream buffering again okay is it fine please be fine Ooh. let me double check okay it looks fine um <laughs> youtube no tell me about it um hello echelon um, no, I think this is such a useful point that she brought up, though, that like the purpose of the acronyms, <laughs> keep talking, thank you, um, is to confuse people because I, as a person who's like pretty well aware of what's going on with the Duggars and the fundamentalism stuff, um, like I know what alert is, right? But I didn't realize that it was literally owned, operated, endorsed, paid for by IBLP and Bill Gothard. Um, I had no idea that this was like all the same thing. I thought it was just like heavily affiliated with them. Um, so like, I think she's dead on that. Like the purpose of this is to sort of, um, yes, my, she's on a piece of paper, um, to like divert people's attention, um, from like the core of the issue, which is that this is all owned by one man who's wildly uh inappropriately abusing his power and his resources to create essentially like a religious institution uh for the purpose of like overthrowing um like law and order as we know it like that like what she was saying about like a militia of homeschooled boys sounds a lot scarier like because that's what it is you know yes yes area it's one giant ecosystem exactly that and i feel like people would balk at this a lot more if they were aware that there's like 30 something programs that are all owned and operated and like financially supported by this one person with the same goal in mind. But because they're like diffusing um, attention on these by, by putting all of these different labels and names and stuff, it manages to sort of fly under the radar as like, nah, yeah, it's just, just it's just a weird camp that boys go to. Right. It's like Boy Scouts for religious boys, except like, no, it's not. It's literally a training institute and a, a brainwashing camp for homeschooled religious boys. Um, I saw something that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, Echelon loves laying on paper. Um, she just really likes it. I've talked about this before. She really likes paper. She really likes plastic bags. Um, and so I put stuff over there because she likes to lay on it. Um, and then it's mutually beneficial because we get <laughs> cat eye bleach and she gets to have a nice little nap. Um, the Duggar boys have gone to this. Yes. Um, alert is similar to journey to the heart for girls. Yes. Um, well, and that's what I was saying. Like, I, I knew that all of the Duggar boys, if not most of them, have gone to alert. I just didn't realize that it was like literally a Bill Gothard program. Uh, she is a texture girly, Leo. OK, uh, we're at 1231. Uh, we're going to press play in three, two, one. <laughs> Alert is Gothard's paramilitary organization, very deeply steeped in IBLP's teachings on authority. Our God is a God of order. He will continue to guide and control all that he has planned for our future. I don't think our parents realized how intense it was or that anything terrible was happening at these places. Oh. They controlled every single thing that we did. If you were in trouble, they would lock you in the prayer room for hours up to days, up to weeks. Come again? It was just an empty hotel room with no furniture. And they would give you a Bible until they thought you were appropriately repentant. And that was wildly up to other kids, team leaders. When the team leader raises three fingers, the children know that it is time to smile. My worst stay there, my team leader did not like the shoes that I had worn. They had a bit of a heel on them, and 
that wasn't against the rules, but she personally just didn't like it and thought it was sinful and distracting to the men. And by a bit of a heel, I mean, I was in the prayer room for four days, I think. Four days? I was 16. Whoa. It was just a nightmare. Yeah. My Every God. Two weeks Hold on. Pause. Um, let's talk about that really quick. We, yeah, the, we have the research to support how harmful solitary confinement is. Um, and it's something that people are like advocating for prison systems to move away from. Um, and Bill Gothard is out here weaponizing that psychological abuse on children and allowing other children to to weaponize their authority to abuse other children. Like, hello? Th this is also, too, what we talked about yesterday with the um, duality of being a victim and an abuser at the same time. I don't doubt that the person who locked her in that prayer closet and who had issue with her shoe was also being abused in some way and, like, trying to survive. Um, but, like, this is what these communities do to people, particularly people in marginalized um, identities and, like, positions of vulnerability, right? Like, in order to keep your sort of forced to um, abuse other people. And not that that person should be excused from the – uh, consequence of those actions like that person should still very much be held accountable for the way that they traumatize someone um but i just i think it's important to highlight that in this community the only people who win are basically uh the fathers the heads of household um sometimes uh and bill gothard like this is so this is also just like literally right out of the handbook about cult tactics this is wild um, talk about getting PTSD. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, it's the whole I want them to be abused. Yes, Natasha. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, Lamar's. Um. Uh, ha, ha, ha. I want to hug that person. Me too. I feel therapy. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. Mm hmm. Mary, it's all about that uh, umbrella of authority thing. Literally, Leo, how is this legal? I mean, it's probably not, to be fair, um, but it's Arkansas, and so they got away with it. Um, yeah, I mean, it probably is illegal, but also, like, um, I I can imagine, well, actually, I don't know. Because Arkansas, I was just thinking, sorry, I got distracted, but I was thinking because you guys were talking about Arkansas loosening the restrictions on child labor. Um, and it's not a secret that there are a lot of religious fundamentalists who make a concerted effort to be involved politically um, and in the legislature, especially in rural places like Arkansas. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a concerted movement to either not address what Bill Gothard is doing or to like explicitly legalize the way that he treats people. Um... Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes. Think about what happens in the troubled teen industry. Yeah, this is kind of that. It's a, a similar issue, except that this is religiously oriented. OK, we're at 14 minutes even. We're going to press play in three, two, one. We would go to Walmart. I bought a box of tampons. When you get back, they go through your stuff and they took them instantly. And I couldn't have them anymore. They were like these are a form of pleasure and I got locked in my room because I took my own virginity with them oh. and like robbed my husband of the right to break my hymen, you know, so they Jesus. took my devil sticks. Devil sticks. You'd go through these sessions where they would grill you on what you did wrong and how you could do it better this is Scientology. and over oh and my over God. be forced to confess. Shame was a tool oh that really kept all of us in line. I feel like shame uh, was killing me. At the Oklahoma City Training Center, they sealed the windows shut so that we couldn't go out on the ledge what? and attempt to commit suicide. Oh my God. One day, I see my housemate with a big knife to her throat. Hold on, Jesus. Uh, trigger warning, I was not anticipating that. Good God. Um. Sorry, hold on. Um, I can't even explain how effed up this is. It's so disgusting and I can't imagine. Yeah, Peyton. Um, I know the tampon thing is wild. Um, I do want to talk about this real quick. Um, yeah, thank you, Allie. I'm so sorry. Um, I did not know that that was coming. 
Um, the in part of the difficulty in getting stuff like this shut down is due to the status of religion. Yes. Um, a little bit. Yeah. Area. It's not quite that simple, but there is, um, a lot of difficulty in shuttering religious institutions like this because it can turn into a shit fight about constitutional rights really quickly. Um, I do want to address this though, because, um, I think a lot of people are apt, especially in cases like this to say like, what's the big deal, you know, like, um, shame and emotional harm and whatever, um, you know, like what, uh, you know, like stop being such a baby kind of. Um, and I just feel compelled to speak to the impact that shame and hurt feelings has on human development, especially because this is happening to people in like very formative years. Um, it can't be understated how difficult this stuff is to unpack later in life. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure that all of these, um, survivors, are going to attest to this like years like years and years and years and years to unpack to unlearn and to find a sense of safety even within their own bodies um and so ritualistic abuse like this like complex abuse like this um is like very much a life ruiner also youtube can you stop doing this to me please um i think it's working now hopefully uh shame-based society create people who can't yes mary very much that uh, literally having shame ingrained into them from the time they're babies from blanket training. Yes, Allie. And all of the preverbal trauma there that they might not have language or an understanding of why something is traumatizing to them, but it is still. Um, that's another thing. That's like a mind fuck and it fucks up your development and it makes it really difficult to work through later in life because there is no inciting event for that. You just have always felt this way, um, which again, just like really fucks up a person's psyche and like sense of safety you know hi micah thanks for coming hi lolel thanks for coming my sibling goes to secular therapy and they've had multiple therapists try talking to them about religion religion that's interesting the goat um there are also uh, very much uh licensed educated uh therapists who are religious and can um integrate your particular faith into treatment also um okay hi grace all right we're at 1502 uh we're gonna press play in three two one she's like the bible says that it is better to put a knife to your throat than to be a glutton oh wait my what God. what this a bible verse brought you to this place they worried about us becoming the best godly females for our husbands. So it was about, you know, this maintaining of your weight. We had people right in front of us that needed the biggest help, and all we ever did was throw prayer at them. God. We were all brainwashed by Bill. Mr. Gothard lived everywhere. (laughs) He would visit all the training centers just all the time. Gothard flitted about the country and really the world like a celebrity. Mr. Gothard had always projected this image that he only took a very small portion of money. He drove a very old car. I found out that the entire Gothard family was living incredibly extravagantly off of the Institute's money. He came across as authentic, but IBLP is modeling the exact opposite of everything that it claims to represent. Instead of simplicity, you're going to see claims. You're going to see gold-plated hallways. No. My family struggled to pay for the (laughs) seminar because it was very expensive, and the homeschool program was very expensive. Bill Gothard used IBLP families to grow the Institute into this huge organization with real political power and connections. At the various training centers, a lot of the things that they were doing was election campaigning for candidates that Bill Gothard had an interest in seeing elected. He was (sighs) connecting with politicians, Mike Huckabee, Sarah Palin, Sonny Perdue, Rick Perry. IBLP's biggest donor is David Green, who is the CEO of Hobby Lobby. Obviously, in our culture, you've seen a lot of deterioration of character. And so it's, it should be obvious to just about any businessman that uh, 
that this is a, a great need. A lot of the training centers they had were gifts from local governments. City officials have a lot of money that they can disperse, and when Gothard found this out, he ended up sticking his fingers into this government tax money pie. Now, our look at the family and a movement in communities around the country to teach morality as part of the public school curriculum. Bill Gothard's right. teachings have been used in public schools. Gothard freely admits he wants the Ten Commandments back in public schools, Ew. but insists character first, which contains no overt references to God or the Bible, is not a backdoor way of doing so. The Oklahoma Training Center, the first two weeks were spent teaching us how to gaslight children into Bible studies. Whoa! Character coaches. We didn't need their parents' permission, and we were absolutely indoctrinating them. Critics claim the lessons teach blind obedience to authority. His teachings had made it into private prisons. Oh, God. Correction Corporation of America has this program in 28 of their facilities. This year, they're going to put it in 12 more. This is why I came to prison, for these teachings that I'm learning right now. Oh, God. So at this point in time, the IBLP teachings in some bad. areas are beginning to spread into the military and no. into the police. Oh, it's, it's all bad. It's just what soldiers need to have with it. More? If all the layers of authority are lined up correctly, the one in authority should simply have to speak and it should get done. Of course, police. I was, was not. literally about to make a crass joke about how I'm sure the police department is next. And then this man, woo, yeah. Yeah, he'll take tax money, but any bets on Gothard is taking advantage of every tax. Oh, of course he is, Lori. How do you think he's so rich? Uh, Aria, that is super fair. Um, friendly reminder to everybody uh, for hydrating, taking some deep breaths, taking some time for yourself because this is a lot. Yes, death. this is a very doom and gloom section of this documentary. Um, yes, Brandy, all day yesterday I had the worst uh, nausea accidentally disliked <laughs> thank you trumpet player <laughs> listen engagement is engagement you know what i'm saying gonna make some comfort soup i love that leo yes deep breathing with love but deep breathing um this i will say like this is something that um has been discussed ad nauseum in some of the snark community places uh, about how there does seem to be there it doesn't seem to be there is a concerted effort for the children obviously the male children um to be shoehorned into politics we saw this happen with um one of the Duggar sons I think his name is Jed um who ran for office in Arkansas obviously Jim Bob did this and Josh Duggar was um directly involved with a lobbying group uh, but, like, this is the thing, right? Like, this is the thing that they continue to do. Um, the intense things that people will drag other people through. Um, you mean, like, in, like, the IBLP sense? I have my sensory toys. Love that. Um, I need food. Ooh, yeah. Definitely eat something. You guys, I had pancakes this morning, and they were delicious. There's a place down the street from my house that has the most incredible pancakes. Um really bad uh ba, ba, ba. when some of us live with or work in environments with these mentalities it makes us even more infuriating yes uh it tells you to smile as you walked yeah 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 jay feel that um i get to see my mom this evening that's fun frylick uh she lives in a different state so i'm excited to see her yay uh, family visits um when they live far away is um like a special kind of joy yeah, Mary, that, yeah, this is the end goal of IBLP. It's not like um, a uh, exception. It is the rule. We talked about this yesterday with the way that um, Jim Bob and Josh behave themselves, that they aren't the exception in this community. They are the rule. Like, this is exceedingly common in, in IBLP. Uh, were they banana pancakes? <laughs> they were actually chocolate chip pancakes. Um, I did consider putting a banana on them, my own self, uh, but I didn't. Because, fun fact, I'm actually allergic to bananas. So, <laughs> I can only eat them when they've been cooked, like banana bread and stuff. All right. Uh, we're at 1851. Let's get back into this. We're going to press play in three, two, one. Just an academic curriculum. World domination was the goal. 
They had training centers in Russia, New Zealand, Australia, Mexico, Malaysia, the they Philippines, did. Singapore. They are taking this stuff everywhere. Coming up next on 19 Kids and Cabin. Well, we're getting ready to go on this big trip to the other side of the world. Reality TV to me is a very powerful force. 19 Kids and Counting becomes a recruiting tool for the Institute. Yes. Discovery Networks, with more than 1.5 billion global subscribers. These programs have built TLC Discovery into this international empire. They've given us the ability to really use a show to We're in episode three, include Randy. a lot of Bible principles that we live by. And it's it's actually through TLC, it's gone around the world. They have taken the family on all these international trips. Bingo, toes, gringos! A lot of the older show was fish out of water stories. We're getting ready to go on a Japanese TV show. This definitely was much different than what we were accustomed to. Konnichiwa. What's your faith background? I don't do it in a reason God. He's got a plan for your life. He loves you. We just have to repent from our allowed sin, to do turn this? to him, give him the control of our life. Thank you. Oh, All right, pure guys, evangelism. Let's go invade the castle. It's not funny in this context. Oh in 2016, God. we were living in El Salvador at the time doing mission work. Jim Bobby just got the show back up and going with Jill and Jessica counting on. We're sitting in our new home in Central America. We're so blessed to be here with our little family. TLC was pressing us about coming back for a shoot. It's called Jill and Jessica counting on. You can't not come. Like, we have to do this. We and said, the pressure was on. News to us, like, why are you so surprised that we can't come? We said, like, we're here for 10 months. You guys have been coming down here filming us. Now it's a matter of principle. Like, we're going to be here. That was, like, the first time that we really put our foot down and said no. I've never said no to my family before and just been like, no, no, no. We cannot do what you're asking us to do. And it was one of those, like, aha moments for us that basically they're like, well, you have to. Okay, hold on, pause. I do want to address this. Uh, first of all, uh, mission trips, uh, eyebrow raise. Um, it's not to say that all of them are bad necessarily, but a fucking large majority of them are essentially colonization. Um, just, yeah, they're modern day colonialism and they suck. Uh, please don't go on mission trips. Um, if you have a desire to help people, um, then donate, you know, um, participate in grassroots activism, uh, other, other things. Eric, you posted a meme about this. Yeah, mission trips are just not the vibe. Really, I want to encourage people to steer away from this because first of all, it centers whiteness. But second of all, they're more so tourism than they are anything else. You're not actually really uh, participating in any meaningful change. And oftentimes it's for the purpose of forcing people to accept your religious beliefs, your cultural beliefs, um, erasing other people's culture, erasing people's um, community and distancing them from things that are actually very sacred and important. Um, yeah, yeah, colonization tourism. Yeah, exactly. Um, so just uh, not good vibes. Um, and also, um, I want to highlight what Jill just talked about. Um, that that was kind of an eye opening moment for her. This is why on the channel, um, I have in the past and do currently and will continue to in the future, take the stance that while yes, going no contact cold turkey with family members can be a very valid, very life giving, uh, very transformative choice for some folks. You don't necessarily need to be prescribing that advice to people um, in order for that to make a difference in their lives. This is why sometimes taking the approach with folks who are in the early stages of learning how to set boundaries that you can just say no, right? Or that you can um, say yes, but with a compromise. Um, this can be uh, the start of a deconstruction process for some folks. And so when we put people in a corner to say the only healthy way to deal with abusive family members or problematic uh, relationships is to cut them off cold turkey. That won't feel like a realistic option to a lot of people. And so we can close that door and then mitigate whatever positive effect we might have. Um, this is why, like, clinically speaking, it's really, really important. Um, the phrase, like, 
meeting people where they're at is like a cliche in the therapy world, but it's a cliche for a reason. Um, It's not our job to prescribe what we think is the correct thing to do, even if we can see outside or from the outside clinically that like this is objectively unhealthy for you. Sometimes it's just about creating um, a bridge or like a gateway for folks to understand that like, yes, you can have some level of autonomy, some level of boundary setting, some level of impact here. Um, and that gradually over time, you will continue to grow in this comfort. You'll receive the positive benefit of like honoring your own boundaries, right? And then begin to feel emboldened and to feel safe to set further boundaries that are more authentic and like more life-giving to you. Um the, it's really hard, especially in a large family. Yes, Natasha. That's the other thing is the like no contact is the only way to be healthy thing is like very white um, in its approach um, and just not at all honoring to the way that intergenerational and um, communally focused cultures uh, function. Like that's just not <laughs> simply not how it works. Um, was there ever another time when Netflix had traffic issues? Are you guys talking about Love is Blind? My partner went no contact with his whole family because his mother is that bad. No contact is hard. Yes, Christy. And that's what I'm saying too. Like it is a super valid choice for a lot of people. And sometimes it's the only choice, Um, especially after having made these smaller interventions. It can be the only choice that will grant you any level of peace. And so I don't want to shit on that at all because it's super, super um, transformative for some people's lives. But also there are a whole host of interventions that can happen up to that point in varying levels of – seriousness or severity that can still create impact you know um it's only difficult because of my kids yeah that's super fair um I think like the conversation around like what do you tell your kids how do you tell your kids is super super complicated for people um yes no contact is very hard cried so much I super see that Orion super super common remedy thank you so much for gifting 10 memberships (laughs) Yay, look at that. Uh, Grace, Jane, Artemis, Azalea, Pokemon fan things. Hell yeah. Welcome to the channel memberships, my friends. You're one of us now. Uh, we have no contact with my husband's father because he was a bigot. It wouldn't stop in front of our kids. Yes, Mary. Um, again, super common, especially when people are trying to force their belief systems onto kids or other vulnerable family members. Um, it's a choice that makes a lot of sense, you know? Um, I'm sure that that was a super, super difficult thing though. Um, I still contact my dad to ask for money. In my opinion, if he's not giving me emotional support, he might as well pay for my therapy. Eric, I love that. (laughs) Make his pockets hurt. Um, there's also crossover. Yes, Taylor, between QAnon and IBLP, a hundred percent there is. Um, yeah, yeah, this is uh, on Amazon Prime, actually. It's not on Netflix. But um, to answer that question, though, Netflix did have issues with traffic during the Love is Blind live reunion. But I think that was mostly because they were just not prepared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Peyton, you break it, you buy it. <laughs> Too real. Um. Yes, Christy, the hardest part about cutting off family is that a lot of your friends will try to convince you to stop. And sometimes this will come from family members, too. And it's such a mind fuck to feel like firm in this decision. And then all of a sudden you have people undermining it and then you feel good about it. And then all of a sudden you feel guilty. There's so much emotional turmoil that happens there. Um. Hi, Danny. Thanks for coming. Rachel. Yes, the show is absolutely wild. Um. Ba, ba, ba. no contact is a hard point to get to i have been uh family clean for a year and counting removing the abusers has been truly remarkable ah freedom for the little me i love that miriam yes that's the best feeling is that freedom that like uh deep breath that like sigh of relief that happens um i always figured i could go no contact but things changed a lot after i actually got away from my family Ooh, yeah um i love that for you home keys i think sometimes um that distance really can make such a difference okay my ac just kicked on and it's like blowing dust in my face um very much need to change the air filter all right we're at 21 minutes 11 seconds and we're gonna press play in three two one my dad sends us the signature page along with like just the obligation section of the contract i was like somebody forged my signature i'm sure of it and then i look at it and i'm like that is my signature 
and that's when we realized like that I had signed this the day before we got married. Signing <laughs> And then I'm like, oh, I remember that. That's not what I thought I was signing. We never gave our word that we're generally gonna be committed to anything. This was fraud. And I'm freaking out because now we're aware of this contract. Like, does it hold any water? Like, are we gonna get off the plane and like they're gonna arrest us because we like violated something? Because if we're giving up something, then we should get something in return. Jim Bob yes. said, Well, what do you want? Like, you know, ten dollars an hour? And I said, I don't know, what's it worth? He's like, Well, what's your price? I said, What's it worth? He goes, What's your price? What's it worth? He's like, oh, I can so pay you ten dollars an hour. Okay, hold on. I just want to draw people's attention to the fact that Jim Bob actually said, oh, bye, Eric. Thanks for coming. Jim Bob actually sent this contract to his daughter as a means of manipulating her and, and creating such a fear response that she would capitulate to what he wanted. Hello? Uh, that's fucking nuts. Uh, is definitely freeing from your inner child. Oh, about the no contact thing, Orion. I love that. Um, <laughs> I really, really, really want to emphasize that it's not stupid of Jill to trust her family, given the fact that they're her family and the environment they were brought up within. Yes, AJ. Um, also, like, besides the fact that she was indoctrinated from birth to blindly trust her dad as the authority figure, and it probably took years of deconstruction before she was even comfortable to acknowledge that maybe he was not always to be the default authority figure. Um, but on top of that, this is the way that family is supposed to function. They are supposed to be people who are fucking safe. Our family are supposed to be the people that, in theory are our safest and most reliable and most trusted above all. And Jim Bob and all of the the authority figures in IBLP abuse this. They weaponize this for their own particular and unique benefit, regardless of whether it causes harm or trauma or damage to their family members, which is so fucked up. Um, also a partial contract. Hi, Gooseys, Mooseys. Thanks for coming. Um, is the contract even valid if, um, nothing is exchanged? I don't know, Alex. I mean, I know nothing about legal anything. Hi, Lucy. Uh, love you. It's not Netflix. It's Prime. Yes. Yeah. We talked about that earlier. Um, this, um, series is being hosted on Amazon Prime. Um, thank you so much for your $2 super chat. I appreciate you. Yes, I agree. It's almost never so black and white. Um, I was, if I wasn't financially dependent on my family, then I would cut some people off. Yeah, Haley, that's also a very common issue, especially in uh, this economy and with student loans being what they are and there being a housing crisis and there being a health care crisis. Like it's not that's why I said earlier. It's not a realistic expectation sometimes for people to just up and leave, you know. Um, OK, I know it does. Honda Freedom, it does feel like a crossover with Scientology. Uh, I really wonder if Bill Gothard was like reading L. Ron Hubbard's books. Okay. Um, 2210. We're pressing play in three, two, one. That's when we asked to talk to TLC. Chad said Chad something out. about. He said you can't talk to them without me on without the me on there because the contract's not with you. It's through your dad and like I'm his representative, so like I have to be involved in these conversations. And we were not able to talk to TLC. Yeah, honestly, they yeah. probably would think if you have a problem with it, you'd speak up, but. It's not the boat that I was in. Wow. Family relies on food banks. We have Jill Duggar, who is saying she never made a dime, that she even had to, at one point, rely on food banks to help feed her family. Around that time, my dad said, thanks to Derek, I'm going to go ahead and pay some people, pay some of the older kids a lump sum. He said some of the boys are getting to the point where they want to start businesses and stuff. So I think it's like good timing and blah, blah, blah. The amount that he ended up the paying it all sum to each person, I don't think it would be a coincidence that that would be very close to what minimum wage would be up to 18. But in order to receive that, you had to sign another deal with my dad. So he extorted you. Production company, Mad Family Inc. It would be like forever. We were automatically like, we're done. We found out on social media that our relationship, if we ever had a relationship with TLC, came to an end at that time. It was a difficult decision, but something that we knew like we really needed to do for our family. My family, um, 
we've had some disagreements and stuff. We don't want to just be like, oh, they're sorry, so we should just move on and yeah. everything's okay and basically nothing changed. It's obviously hard when Hell there's yeah, continued Jill. stuff happening. I got threats like someone reached out anonymously on a very lengthy text message. It was just bizarre. Somebody who claimed to be a true friend, why are you anonymous using a burner phone then? He Did wants- Did Bob sent you that text message? I, I don't know, I can't speculate. I don't think so. Uh, Ooh, I ew. To the police department and shared exactly like what the threat was. It's just like this whole culture, oh. I don't know, of the fear and the lack of trust. Disobedience doesn't mean dishonor. Like you're dishonoring me just because you don't agree exactly with what I think. We don't bless what, what you're doing, what so you therefore do. you have to do what we want you to do. Honor and respect wow. and obey were all on the same level back then. In the culture that Gothard created, there is an unchecked power dynamic at play. And whenever that happens, you're going to start seeing some form of abuse. The idea that your parents are your ultimate authority wasn't necessarily true because it was whoever was in charge of you at that moment. Basically, the oldest wow. male present was in charge. Ew. When I was at a training center, one of the boys maintenance at the training center, one night he came in and he- Hold on, uh, trigger warning. Um. Yes, Lucy. Thank you for the five dollars super chat. I did you not hear me when I said I said something about it earlier? Um, that uh, the show is being hosted on Amazon Prime. Yes. Um, okay, yeah. So first of all, uh, trigger warning upcoming for uh, SA. I have a feeling that that's where uh, this is going. But second of all, um, I wanted to talk about this because while this is an IBLP specific thing, this is also a very common dynamic to exist in abusive households generally, regardless of their religious orientation. Um, this attitude that if you don't agree with me, you are therefore being hurtful to me happens all the time. This is like a, a play number one out of the abusive parent playbook. Um, if I don't agree with you, what you're doing, therefore you should change it. Or if you aren't going to just acquiesce, um, you are therefore being hurtful to me. This is a very, very common and very difficult um, perspective to unlearn. It creates a lot of shame and guilt for folks. And it also um, can create difficulty in trust in relationships, in attachment in relationships, um, in self-esteem stuff, obviously. Um, yeah, yes, Lucy, I saw. I can't tell if you're just not, or can you not hear? <laughs> I feel like I'm going nuts. Um, yes, if you don't listen to me and my authority, you'll make God unhappy. Yeah, very much that. Um, which, yeah, is a thing um, that's weaponized in religious environments, but also... Um, uh, is a thing that happens in regular or like non-religious abusive households also. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Christine. I was like, am I muted? <laughs> like, I know the internet has been really bad and there's a delay, but I'm like <laughs> feeling like I'm losing my mind. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Great. Lucy. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah. Um, Ba, ba, ba. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mega chat. I had the same thought. Okay. Um, the oldest male is in charge. How about no? A hundred percent Los Co. Um, also too, again, it's just worth noting that this is like a normalized part of IBLP culture. Um, just allowing any Tom, Dick or Harry who happens to be the oldest man in the room to be in charge of people with absolutely flagrant disregard for what that person's intention might be, whether they're a safe person like that's freaking wild. This is so wildly unsafe and inappropriate. Um, and also just speaks to the lack of care or concern that most of the adults and authority figures in this culture have for the safety of their own children, which is disgusting. Like that's just not the way that it's supposed to be. Um, shout out to all the survivors. I know, goat. I, I know I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. I'm glad, um, that Amazon is platforming so many survivors in this show because I think it's really important for people to hear it from someone who survived it. I think it's more impactful hearing from the actual survivors of the abuse and not just people who are like speculating about it, you know, um, 
it's so much more meaningful hearing about somebody's real lived experience and how this impacted their lives. Um, and I'm glad that they didn't include like just one person. You know, they included so many people. Mackenzie, thank you so much for gifting a channel membership, my friend. I appreciate you. Lori, <laughs> welcome to the channel memberships. You're one of us. They all need parenting classes. Brandy, they need a lot more than that. <laughs> they need a whole stuff. Um, I've been so inactive this stream. Mackenzie, hardly. Thank you for being here at all. I appreciate you. <clears throat> I don't know what that was about. Okay, we're at 2519. Pressing play in three, two, one. Climb to my bed. Bye, Haley. I didn't know. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Uh, again, I said this earlier, but just so everybody knows, this is like strong trigger warning. I have a feeling we're about to hear a graphic description of SA. So um, I'm going to do like a five second countdown uh, for anybody who needs to tap out to tap out. My dog was being weird in the living room. I just heard her. I'm pretty sure she just broke something. I love that for me. Um, <laughs> when do I learn the secret handshake? Natasha, thanks for joining the channel memberships. Welcome to the channel memberships. You're one of us, my friend. Um, okay. We are going to press play. Uh, content warning for graphic description of SA. Uh, here in three, two, one, please tap out if you need to. Oh, how to say, I don't want you in my bed. Get out, please, because I'd never been taught that. <laughs> and not only that, but any back talk was beat out of us at a young age. So Fuck. I can say with experience that sexual assault and training centers within the Institute under Bill Gothard is very real and rampant. God. Bill Gothard had actually been the I subject know, of a sex one. scandal back in 1980. Steve Gothard, Bill's brother, was using his position of power in IBLP to sexually harass women and to coerce them into performing sex acts on him. God. What a surprise. People are coming forward and saying that Steve has sexually abused and harassed multiple uh, people in the office. And so what Bill did was take his brother, sends him out to a campus that has even less oversight than the main campus does, and then leaves Steve to basically do whatever he wants out there. The North in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan tubing, kayaking, and hiking were just a few of the many activities they were able to enjoy. There is a Religious landing strip for the leader thing. jet that they owned. Girls who disobeyed Bill got sent to Steve in the Northwoods. Ooh. At one point, Bill Gothard is caught with a young woman in a cabin. And so this kind of comes to a head, and Gothard and his brother are confronted by everyone who's oh God. working for them. Bill keeps trying to find ways to keep Steve in the organization. And one of his solutions Thank is, you, well, hi, why hi. don't we just have him marry one of the women? And when you try to get a, an understanding of what was going on in this culture. Hold on, pause. Uh, we're at 2723. We are pausing because uh, there's a content warning for CSA. Yes, Days in Blue. That's what I wanted to say earlier, too. This is starting to feel like just an almost explicit description of human trafficking. I am blown the fuck away that th th this is just like a normal and understood, not normal, but like this is just an understood part of this culture and, and people are just like, mm-hmm, yeah, for sure. Bill Gothard has no problem normalizing that in this culture. Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, Mackenzie. Um, we're just pausing real quick to make everybody aware in the next couple of seconds, if not a couple of minutes, there's going to be uh, detailed and probably graphic descriptions of CSA. We've already heard some descriptions of SA and um, basically human trafficking. Um, so a uh, big, strong trigger warning. And also this is your opportunity to mute the stream, leave the stream, uh, you know, like leave what have you. If that's going to push your buttons, please take care of yourselves, my friends. Um, there is absolutely no shame in tapping out, um, when stuff like this is pushing your buttons, because this is not for the lighthearted. 
Yeah, Natasha, 100%. Uh, that is super fair, Artemis. Uh, please take care of yourself. You are absolutely welcome, again, to mute the stream, leave the stream, um, you know, like tap out and be done watching this uh, in its entirety. That is perfectly, perfectly fine. Home keys, you too. Yeah, guys, get some water, take a break, get some um, some snackies. Yeah, go get some gay pride snacks, my friends. Watch some TikToks, play some video games, ground yourself. It's important. Yes, wishing everyone's nervous system rest <laughs> and comfort. This is a lot. Um, well, yeah, and we'll be here, you know? Like, if you guys want to come back in... 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Like, we will happily hang out with you still. But I love the gay snacks part. Me too, Brandy. Everybody loves gay snacks. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, Natasha. Uh, ooh, is... I don't know, Christine. I think fruit snacks might be gayer. Because <laughs> it's not getting fruitier than fruit. Because it's, it's like g gelatinous fruit. And they're in gay colors. They're usually in rainbows. <laughs> Twizzlers gay. <laughs> uh yeah i think anything rainbow ooh, ooh 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 um nerds gummy clusters have you guys tried those they're so good i could smash a whole bag of nerds gummy clusters in like an hour flat those things are so so good Ooh, fruit by the foot yeah also uh incredibly gay uh skittles definitely gay 100 percent uh what are our thoughts about cotton candy you know, sort of sort of floaty, ethereal, also rainbow. Seems gay to me. She seems like an ally. Echelon in her paper, I know. Nerds clusters are so good. Ooh, and gushers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Ooh, spice spicy mango gummies. Ooh, yes, cotton candy is associated with unicorns. Good call. Jessica, absolutely cheese can be gay because every a uh, gay person that I know is also lactose intolerant. Um, so uh, if we know anything about lactose intolerant girlies, uh, it's that we never uh, honor that. We just be eating dairy and then get diarrhea. Um, I had to pause the stream to let my dog out, but I've been watching at 1.5 speed and I'm back into the present time. Yay, Lenny. Uh, fair warning that we're about to watch a section that has graphic descriptions of CSA and basically human trafficking and a lot of really horrific abuses of human life. So, um, if you need to take a longer break, uh, to avoid watching some really triggering content, uh, this is your fair warning about it. Um, gay bacon. Ooh, an m, &M ice cream sandwich. Christine, that sounds so good. Cheese can be gay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandy, glad I don't have food allergies. How does it feel to be God's favorite? Brandy, can't relate. <laughs> I have a whole litany of food allergies, and I'm so mad about it. Um, <laughs> Mackenzie. Okay, you guys. Um... I appreciate you guys so much for giving me uh, space to have little breaks and stuff. Bye, Goosey Mooseys. Have a great afternoon. Um, I appreciate you guys giving me space to uh, just like chit chat and ground a little bit in between the triggering sections. So um, again, this is your fair warning. We're going to talk about CSA, very horrific abuses of human uh, or, or um, human abuse here in a sec, human trafficking, things like that. Um, so if that's a sore spot for you, don't watch this section. Please take care of yourselves. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, we're at 2723. Uh, trigger warning moving forward. We're going to press play in three, two, one. And how were women viewed and how is sexuality viewed? That story is terrifying. Mm -hmm. And even at the time, that was so out there that even his own board was like, no, that does not fix this. Even by their standards, that was too far. Wow. In kind of a compromise, what Bill Gothard ends up deciding to do oh is to get rid of Steve. But he came up with this new teaching. It's the Matthew 18 teaching. Calling this biblical, basing it on Matthew 18, making it impermissible to gossip which oh, means God. making allegations against leaders in particular. This is also part of the Duggars commitments. Praise publicly, and if you have something negative to say, just 
go to that person privately. This culture is shaped in a way yeah. that makes abuse incredibly difficult to report for women, for other members of the community. They really have no recourse. As if it's not difficult enough already. I do remember listening to some of the sessions that Michelle and Jim Bob did together. I wished that my parents had had the kind of marriage that I thought Michelle and Jim Bob had, or at least they were showing. When I was about 10 years old, my family really shattered apart. Oh boy. Poor thing. My father molested me. God. A lot of people ask me if my mother was aware of the abuse going on. She knew our family was in great danger, but my mother was in a cult too. When Bill first spotted me, I was 13 years old and he was 71. God. He asked as soon as I turned 14 for me to quit homeschool, to move up to Chicago and live at headquarters indefinitely. No, Jesus, we're pausing really quick. Bill Gothard is a fucking ghoul. Jesus Christ, Bill Gothard is such a bad person. Uh, I think this is how the Mormon church also handles problems within the community. I don't know about that, Toon Link. I'm not particularly educated about the Mormon church, but I can confidently speak to the norms that exist in cults. Um, and this is that. Uh, the, like, removing any recourse for even reporting misconduct or reporting trauma absolutely, like, play, again, play number one out of the cults and destructive groups playlist. Um, I know, indefinitely, this poor woman. But also for real, like, bless her for talking about this. Because, again, I think, like, this just carries so much more weight um, in hearing this directly from a survivor of this abuse. This is, like, so much more valuable. Um, I hope that Amazon provided her with, like, all of the support and, like, resources that she needed in talking through this. Um, because her being willing to do this is, like, earth-shattering. I live in Chicago. Oh, Jen, I'm sure that there's headquarters all everywhere. Um, I don't like using the word evil, but he is evil. Yeah, that's super fair, Toen. Um, after everything that we've heard, I don't blame you for wanting to use that word. Um, all of these survivors are incredible. Yes, Captain Quesadilla. That's, um, what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. He is repulsive. Uh, the story gets worse. I had a feeling, Shell. That's why I paused it so we could just regroup a little bit um, before we get further into it. Um, I know. Um, I wonder if Amazon did provide them with any resources or if there were like therapists or um, social workers or like, I don't know, crisis people on set um, or if they were allowed to like take breaks and stuff. I would assume so. I would hope that at the very least they were allowed to take breaks and stuff, but I'm curious if they provided them with any kind of formal support for talking about this. Um, Masakine, I too have a latex allergy. There's, yes, there's a link with latex allergies in certain foods. Bananas are one of those fruits. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of fruits under that or like foods under that umbrella that are linked with latex allergies. Uh, so just friendly PSA, if you're allergic to bananas, papayas, kiwi, tomatoes, um, I'm trying to think what the other ones are. There's a bunch of them. Um, you may also be allergic to latex. So that's important to be aware of, especially for medical interactions in like the dentist's office. If they use uh, latex gloves and stuff that can um, be actually quite dangerous. So looking at Echelon's ears gives me peace. She's the cutest. Here, let me try and scooch this. There, slightly closer. Mm-hmm. No vandalism. Don't get arrested. Don't do illegal things, please. Uh, yes, still disgusting, though, Peyton. Absolutely. Um, no, <laughs> love, Doug. It's not that latex is in bananas. It's that whatever, um, I think it's the proteins that are in bananas that can stimulate an allergic reaction in some folks are also similar to um, something that's in latex. I don't know if it's um, because the plants are similar or if there's just like a... Um, molecular structure that is similar but it can cause like a similar reaction uh notably anaphylaxis 
where your airway swells and then you can die, which is quite dangerous. Um, why? For a second, I was like, why are there eggs in my chat? <laughs> no advocating for illegal shit, please. <laughs> um, I love everything that people with allergies to latex can't eat. So I'm sorry, guys. Oh, avocado. That's the other one. I just remembered avocado because um, that's the bane of my existence. I love eating, eating guacamole and avocado. <laughs> Leo. Um, I mean, that's true. <laughs> um, wait, mangoes are in the same family as poison ivy. <laughs> we just like eggs. Danny, get out of here with that. <laughs> yeah, uh, cashews and pistachios also. All right. Um, we're going to get back into it. We're at 29 minutes and 30 seconds. Again, a trigger warning. We're going to talk about same, some very explicit um, accounts of CSA, abuse of power, religious trauma, those types of things. So if that's a button for you, this is your chance to um, remove yourself in whatever way you need to to protect yourself. Um, thank you, irradiated woman. That's what I was trying to say. I appreciate you. All right. We're pressing play in three, two, one. Bill took one of his female assistants. He pointed at me and he looked her straight in the eye and he said, don't let this one go. Whoa. Oh. As time goes on, the it fear. becomes very obvious that Bill Gothard has like a type. It was kind of the rumor that like the blonde girls get picked. One of the most exciting ministries the Lord has entrusted to the Institute this uh, year is the Journey to the Heart. Gross. Students on the journey also receive training and one-on-one -on -one counsel from Mr. Gothard. Ella, you're fine. Journey to the Heart was a 10-day camp. Mr. Gothard would be there teaching these like lessons throughout the day. Every person that came on a Journey to the Heart had a meeting with him. Yuck. Every single person. Journey to Yuck. the Heart seems to me like a vetting process for like which types do I like to invite for further long-term things? Like, learn more about their vulnerabilities because you're gonna learn those things through an interview. Yeah, Mackenzie, take a break. I was 18 100%. when I met him. I go into a room. Ugh. It was a kind of a dark room. Her hair is I'm in there, his assistant's the sitting over in the corner. Bill Gothard's sitting at his desk. It just felt ominous and intimidating. I'm sure that was by design, too. He basically just kind of leans back with this sort of, like, he's admiring you. Ew. Well, Lindsay, so glad you're here. I would yeah. love for you to come to headquarters. Would you like to come and work at headquarters? Now, I don't know how to, to put enough emphasis on this. Headquarters was the shit. You could not get any higher than working at headquarters, especially as a female. And if this is what Gothard wants, this is what God wants. You want a future? then fulfill our special calling. Meeting Bill Gothard is like meeting the Pope, the President, and Justin Bieber all rolled into one. I just Ow. have got to be the most blessed person I know. He, he does have like an odd person. physical appearance. You know, uh -huh. he's got a Lego-shaped head and mm. his ill-fitting men's warehouse mm -hmm. suit. He can just draw anybody in. It's like watching the snake in the Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. Trust in me. Yuck. Um, we're just pausing really quick. Uh, yeah, he is a cartoon villain. I'm glad that they addressed the um, way that he looks, though, because he does uh, have a Lego head and he looks like he's teleported straight out of the 70s. Like it doesn't matter what clip of him they're showing. Um, also, I did, in fact, get a bug bite on my shoulder yesterday while I was streaming, you guys, and I'm going to die mad about it. Um uh, let's not speculate about victimhood of people who haven't chosen to identify themselves as victims, though. Um, Jill has spoken at length about how traumatizing and damaging it was for her to have her trauma, um, thrust into the public eye without her consent. This is, like, actually a very, very traumatizing, re-traumatizing shaped, <laughs> shape thing. Sorry, I read a comment, but I go shaped head. Uh, traumatizing and, and re-traumatizing thing for survivors of trauma and abuse, um, if someone wants to identify themselves um, and talk about it, that's their own um, choice. But nobody is entitled to the story or the details of somebody's specific personal trauma. That's not fair. Um, the Lollipop Guild from the Wizard of Oz. My God, he kind of is, huh? 
Um, no, yes. Um, Mazikin, he does just look like he's from the 70s. I just am like weirded out. It doesn't matter what um, clip they show of him. All of them look like they're from like 67 to 72. Uh, he does have a similar look to L. Ron Hubbard Jane. He does. My husband is allergic to ragweed and the protein in ragweed. He has trouble with similar proteins found in avocado. Uh, yes. Um, also allergic to ragweed. <laughs> Christy can't confirm. Um, I hate the itch. I can deal. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Same. It's like, especially when it's somewhere, because it's on my the back of my shoulder, and I'm like fucking irritated that I can't just like, you know hi gabby we are talking about the most traumatizing thing that we've heard so far um bill gothard is an abuser and also just a haunted house of a person Ooh, christine an ice pack on the mosquito bite is such a good idea i used to put deodorant on my mosquito bites when i was a kid because a friend told me that it helped and i think it kind of did a little bit Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> i was gonna take a power nap and it turned into a full nap I love that. Um, naps are such a great form of self-love. Um, okay, Captain KCD, yes, same. Uh, I feel like especially my wrists and my ankles are like targeted. <laughs> like I have some kind of uh, homing device on those particular parts of my body where I just get bug bites like wild. Um, yes, he is a haunted house full of ghosts and ghouls. And not the fun kind either. The the shitty kind. Uh okay. Um ba, 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 ba. we're at 3151. Uh we're gonna press play on this again. I just want to be clear, there's a trigger warning here for uh graphic descriptions of CSA, SA, abuse of power, religious trauma, those types of things. So we're getting into it. Uh if you need to take a break, please take a break. Go hydrate, uh, go ground yourself, go um, you know honor whatever needs you have because this is a lot for anybody um okay we're at 3151 pressing play in three two one husbands treat her like a china teacup not a coffee mug bill never married repopulate the nation with kind that i would never kiss a girl until i was at that wedding night never been married Survey who's yes. never had children yes. but yet he has this entire plan which like obviously is what we're talking about but family. that's how you're trying to model a family but right. he's never been a husband or a parent yes i don't think anyone ever questioned it i mean yeah. he got his revelations directly from god so yeah this is giving cold vibes for sure you would get chosen to ride in Mr. Gothard's van. All of us were under 18. Oof. He would always have a girl next to him. There was always petting to heavy petting, his hand on knees, up skirts. We never talked about it. What a terrible thing. I knew it was is. weird, but I didn't know it was wrong. Yeah, you were a he didn't need to test our boundaries because our boundaries had been tested in so many other ways and we had already been proven faithful in a sense. When I was 18, I finally ended up at Her daughter explains to me that she wants to learn how to respect her father. And as he said it, Bill looked at me and winked. They talked to me, he made my dad out to be the villain and proceeded to tell me that my father had lost all authority over me and that Bill was my new authority. Ugh. At headquarters, we kind of would have these like weird, almost like a therapy session and he would always wait for his assistant to leave. Oh no. And he was That's like, That's never good. So are you a virgin? And I was like, well, yes, sir, of course. I didn't know what sex was. I didn't know how babies were made. I didn't know anything. I just knew virginity was the, like this thing that I had within me that 
was only meant for this one person. He's like, well, let's let's kneel before the Lord. And I was like, whoa, that's that's an elevated measure of prayer. So we get down on our knees and I, I immediately do this and I'm just like all ready. And then all of a sudden I feel his hand creep up against mine and he kept rubbing his thumb across the back of my hand, which yeah. we have a thing within the ATI system that we call the six inch rule to keep six inches between a female and a male. And Hold on, we're pausing. Not at all surprised that that rule doesn't apply to Bill Gothard. It really does seem, I don't know if he did this on purpose. I don't want to like assign or like make shit up because I obviously am not um, the expert in IBLP. But it really does seem like all of these rules and these expectations and like the repeated violations of people's boundaries, the repeated um, abuses that disenfranchise and disempower people were all leading up to setting the framework for him being able to abuse people. Like he created this funnel for himself specifically. It really does seem like he did this on purpose for his own benefit. And so then people who are abusers like also flocked to this model because it's a like factory for abuse and trauma. Um, I lied. I'm not back with ramen, but I do did do dishes. Oh, nice. Home keys. Um, fair warning, we are still talking about some real triggering shit. Um, this person is right in the middle of, uh, recounting her abuse with Bill Gothard. Um, this is why I rail against the thought that words are just words and jokes are just jokes. Oh, a hundred percent, Jay. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, well, and it, it does set a groundwork for, um, like repeated boundary violations. It's gaslighting. To tell someone like, oh, you're just taking it too seriously and they take a joke. Ew. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crocheting could be a great grounding activity. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if that were true. Yeah, it does seem that way. Ooh, Rachel. Uh, ramen sounds delicious. I didn't end up eating ramen yesterday. I had Jack in the Box instead because it was faster and I was starving at the end of the stream. Um, that's fair. Uh, Area Gloris. Um... I actually don't, I don't think you can put um, pictures in uh, or links in chat, but you can in Discord. Uh, Toen, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> it's not flautist. Uh, I need to become a patron. Be right back. Hell yeah. Links in the descripty. Um, let's hope so, Jay. Okay. We're at 3501. We're going to press play. Um, Again, just clear trigger warning that she is uh, right in the middle of describing um, CSA and abuse. So if that is a soft spot for you, this is your fair warning to, again, mute the stream, leave the stream, uh, tap out and take care of yourselves. Okay, we're at 3501, pressing play. Three, two, one. He seemed to have no problem. This became routine. This happened three times a week, maybe four times a week. Wow. One night at headquarters, he said, um, you belong here. I love you. Whoa. You know that, right? So abusive. Your father doesn't love you, but I love you. Gross. He played with my hair and he rubbed my shoulders. Bill's a terrible person. And he put his hand on my thigh. Yuck. And the building was empty. Bill said, That's why don't terrifying. you come up to my office? He took me by the hand. We started to walk through the dark hallways. And just as we opened the door, I saw that there was still a male staff assistant sitting at the computer doing some work. And Bill was startled. Nice. He did not expect that man to be in there. Wow. Shortly after I arrived home from headquarters, the abuse at home got significantly worse because Bill had made promises to my dad. My dad was expecting. During pause, uh, cause we need one anyways, but also clean and serene. Thank you so much for the $2 super chat. I appreciate you. Slimmy slappy weevils. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but thank you for the eye bleach, uh, for the $2 super chat and, um, for the, uh, little breaky break. Um, not to inspire group violence. <laughs> no, Christine. We're not advocating for anything violent or illegal in my chat, please. Thank you. Um, 
100% Jennifer thank you for being here also high five for honoring what you need um probably to staff uh for saving her even unknowingly oh yeah I was thinking the same thing um <laughs> think uh, thinking paritable parody non-actionable thoughts about <laughs> Bill Christine uh it's just a road trip mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Um, thank goodness. I know. Thank goodness for that random staff member. Um, okay. It's almost like being, ew, uh, yeah, Rachel, I know. Um, okay. We are going to get back into it again. I know I said this earlier, but a uh, strong trigger warning. We are getting graphic descriptions of CSA, abuse of power, religious trauma, all of the things. So, uh, we're at 3618 pressing play in three, two, one. Thing me to submit more to his authority. I am one of many, many, many young ladies that Bill preyed upon and took advantage of. I would walk by and sometimes he'd be like, oh, I wonder who he's praying with now. But then I couldn't really bring myself to like really look in or stop and, and take a peek. So many other girls were going through that exact same experience and none of us felt that we had even the ability to say anything to anybody because we wouldn't be heard if he yeah. were to, you know, do anything wrong. I brought it upon yeah. upon him. It would probably just make their lives worse if they had reported it. Wizard Book 36 teaches the law of crying Bye, out, Alex. which is that if a woman Thank is sexually assaulted and she doesn't cry out to God for help while it's happening, she's equally to blame. What? It's a teaching that Ugh. basically resituates sexual assault as the victim's fault. Yeah, not at all surprised that Bill Gothard instituted a, a an explicit policy to victim blame uh, people who were being assaulted and preyed upon and abused. Hi, Mackenzie. I am. <laughs> I will murder my toilet with it later. Okay, but an M&M ice cream sandwich is 100% worth it. Um, fair warning, we are still uh, hearing about some really traumatizing shit. Uh, graphic descriptions of CSA and the like. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, feeling like you won't be heard anyway. It's Yes. Um, well, and also, too, these people had been disenfranchised to such a high degree that they had, like, almost no... Uh, wherewithal or like self-awareness it sounds to even recognize that what was going on was in fact an abuse of power um I can imagine that this probably felt so incredibly hopeless and also just like useless to try to talk about even if they did feel safe to talk about it it I, yeah I can't imagine how um hopeless and scary um this man is nasty um lamars to answer your question um no technically like assaulting people is not legal um we talked about this earlier but there is also just a very complicated um series of like layers for why bill gothard got away with this um okay we're at 3723 uh we're gonna get back into the traumatizing uh graphic descriptions of csa here in a hot second so pressing play in three two one in one of the morning wisdom searches, they had us go around in this circle and talk about if we had been attacked or molested or raped and what we did to deserve that attack. Jesus. I was involved in cheerleading and gymnastics. You know, kind of dancing around out there in a short skirt. She had no clue how guys thought. And, and how so... defrauding that was. Because defrauding is stirring up desires in someone that cannot be righteously fulfilled. All of these examples were just existing as a person. Like, oh, well, did you see how short her skirt was? It was like, oh, did you see that, like, she had to bend over to scrub the floor? Like, you can't exist without being accused of tempting a man to attack you. Yeah, that's why built does God into the system. let tragedies take place? If He allows our physical to be damaged, He just increases the spiritual power. Gross. And that's that's a principle through Scripture. No. Pause. We're not going to fucking glorify people's trauma. I hate this. This is also a very common issue in religious abuse. If you've been traumatized in some way that you should not only forgive the person who's traumatized you, but also be thankful for the abuse. 
fuck that shit. Ew, gross, that's not true. Um, And also it's just further traumatizing. That's not how we fucking heal from trauma. There's literally no evidence to support this as being useful. And in fact, there's evidence to support how harmful this is as an intervention for trauma recovery. Um, Yeah, Leo. Yeah, you can't exist without being accused of tempting a man to attack you kind of sums everything up. It really does. It really does. Okay. Uh, 3823, pressing play in three, two, one. Glorified being attacked. Would you rather have never been attacked and not be spiritually mighty? Like, well, now you're lucky, you know? And I almost became jealous of my friends who had gotten raped because God wanted to use them more. That is such a mindfuck. Oh my God. And that's so weird to say out loud. track Gothard's teaching long enough, you see that what we're talking about is the playbook of a powerful Hate narcissist right and a dynamic where there's not any institutional checks and balances put in place. We have a gift to give to you, sir. Give you assurance of our love and affection for you. Oh. Oh my God. What the fuck? look at all the different stories, all the different families, you look at all the different campuses, everywhere you go, you're gonna see the exact same thing happening. Abuse shows up in everything that it touches. Shortly after I arrived home from headquarters, I came across a website called recoveringgrace.org. Recovering Grace was a community online for people to share their stories of the abuse that they experienced in ATI and their own personal stories of recovery. And it is where a lot of the momentum came about to push back against Bill Gothard for his sexual harassment. Hell yeah. On the front page, it was titled, Sexual Harassment at Headquarters. On impulse, I jumped in the comment section and I said, hey, this is my story. A few days later, I got a phone call. Oh from Bill. shit. He oh, was shit. livid. He just lit into me for an hour on the phone and said I needed to remove the comments immediately. He started calling multiple times a day. You know, you have this kind of parallel of Bill Gothard abusing young girls in his program and Josh Duggar abusing young girls in his home. Mm-hmm. A lot of these stories started being shared on Recovering Grace, and so Ooh. many similarities came up. What Bill was accused of ran a pretty wide gamut. Grooming behavior, petting hair, touching hair, long, uncomfortable hugs. One yeah. woman turned around, and he was sitting at the desk, and she could see that he had an erection underneath his pants, and his legs were spread out. He was staring intently at her. It's story after story after story of that. And it almost feels like whatever was repressed inside of Gothard was spilling mm-hmm. out into him testing boundaries of like how far Bill he could go with someone before person. they freaked out. Mm-hmm. There was one woman who High accused Bill Gothard of rape. All right, thank you for returning to your seats. Whenever you and I are falsely accused, it's like we've been given this cup of bitter water, and we must go through this public test. So Gothard was removed from leadership from IBLP because of all of these growing allegations that are coming against him. Just so you know, this property was given to me. And so it escalates to the point where there's a moment at an uh, IBLP event where he has to be physically escorted out of the event by the same campus police group that he helped create. William W. Gothard Jr. was asked by Alert Academy official to leave private property and refused to do so. Now, of course, like every single thing the man's ever written and done is still on the website, and that's still the only thing they're using, but they no longer want the liability of having him, the person, officially a part of the organization. If you're perceived as useful, people will cover up for you. Bill Gothard had that happen. And then, of course, you know, when he was no longer useful, they took the teachings and ran with it in other directions. 
there were sharks circling, realizing that the Institute had a tremendous amount of money, assets mm -hmm. and funds equaling about $90 million. And if you could get rid of Bill Gothard, somebody who was left gets control of all of that cash. Yeah, hold on, pause. I want to talk about this because I think it's just important. Um, I appreciate that they're clarifying this, um, that IBLP and the institution didn't remove Bill Gothard because it was the right thing to do, because Bill Gothard sucks, because they were trying to reform or protect people. No, 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 no. He was removed solely because there were other people who wanted to be in control, who wanted the money and saw that they could use this as an opportunity to oust him from the organization under the guise of protecting their reputation, which is a fallacy and is also so fucked up. Um... Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to pronounce this name wrong. Uh, sp oh, sports writer. Okay, it's just a different spelling of sports writer. Thank you for joining the channel memberships. Uh, I appreciate you so much for joining. Uh, congratulations on being one of us, my friend. Um, b -b -b yes, one of us. Thank you guys for all of the hype in the chat. Um, honestly, this series feels like it turns up the volume on my own. Mm -hmm. Hi, bye. I'm feeling that also. Um, I'm glad that we're pausing every now and again. Um, wait, Fax is here? Fax machine! I'm alive. <laughs> uh, can you pat the cat for us? She's actually, like, across the room. Um, but, uh, we can all pat her in spirit. Let's just give her a little... <laughs> all glory to Fax machine. Hi, Nick. The Discord is available to everybody who's a member of the Patreon at any of the levels. The link to join the Patreon is in uh, the description. Um, you'll get an uh, invite in your welcome email, uh, your little welcome note when you join the Patreon, and that's how you can access the Discord. There's also a permanent link to it up on the Patreon um, in one of the posts. Uh, yes, Jane Carroll. I have a feeling that's where we're headed next because Gil Bates is now on the board of IBLP, if not one of the high-ranking members of the board, if I remember correctly, um, which is pretty damning for their family. I have a feeling that the reason that their show got canceled last year, um, probably had something to do with the murmurings through the grapevine about this documentary and the way that, uh, Gil Bates was going to be cast, uh, in, in all of this. Sending a slow blink echelons away from the chat. Yes. Did you guys know that? Apparently when cats slow blink at you, it's like their way of showing affection to you. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever heard? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I can't with Michelle's voice. I know. My kitties are choosing to snooze with me in the hot room. Aw, love that. <gasps> Excuse. <laughs> that was the weirdest noise. Um, I'm just checking the internet real quick. Still looks like trash, but that's fine. No, no, don't press play. Um, just wanted to say thank you for holding the space for survivors and showing up as a therapist as well as a human being and a content creator. Oh, yeah. Hi, bye. Of course. I appreciate you guys being here. I can't do any of the shit that I'm doing without you guys being here and being part of the community. So I appreciate you guys so much. I am kind of a Labrador retriever in spirit. I feel that. Um... And you can slow blink back to them to show affection too. Yes, Leo, I knew that. I slow, I wink at all of my pets all the time too. Um, it means I love you and trust you. Stop. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay. Um, we are going to get back into it. Uh, this episode's almost over. We only have four minutes left. So, um, praise be for that. Uh huh. Slow blink to all of you in the chat. All right, we're at forty three oh six. We're gonna press play in three, two, one. I encourage you also to bring like two or three of your friends with you yeah, and let's yeah. let's increase this because I think the more people we can get here the more lives you, it will Jim be changed Bob. you suck that Jim Bob in a way is trying to emulate Bill Gothard oh definitely because Mr. Gothard has been taken out of it from what my understanding is is that Jim Bob and Michelle are now his replacement he has changed so much. I don't know I don't if he's know, in the same guy. With them being on TLC's show, I think that it has definitely given them a platform to encourage people to come to IBLP. And they've encouraged people to move to Arkansas, which is completely a cult move. We well, used to be yes. part of a mega church. We started meeting at homes to have a service on Sunday morning, and it's really a special time for our family. They do believe that the way they live is the way everybody should live. I don't yes, think America wants to live like fundamentalist families, but they don't understand what fundamentalist families look like. 
anymore. It's been shined up and put on TLC. This is so fucked up. The last time I talked to my uncle was um, 2019. You, you called him and you said, hey, I'm seeing something about Homeland Security. Oh, no. I have reporters from other countries right. who have flown in here asking us questions. About Homeland Security. And I don't even know what the heck's going on. A breaking news tonight, harsh bye, reality bye, bye. for Thank reality for TV star Josh Duggar. Josh Duggar has been arrested. Duggar asked agents, quote, why are you here with someone downloading child porn? We were able to determine Yikes. that this was the business where downloads of child pornography had occurred. There's an electronic device that possibly might have these this video or images or anything associated like that Pause. on it. Jesus. Kitty headbutts are such a blessing, Toon Link. Um <laughs> need money, Brandy? Um I was working in hell. Oh, because you need money. Fair enough. Um ba -ba -ba. Yeah, more like gilded, not shined up. That's fair. I just paused it real quick because it's a lot. Um, oh, hi, bye. <laughs> You're still here. I saw somebody. Um, oh, maybe those were high fives. I thought it was a wave. I thought you were leaving. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's fair to say that we're probably going to have more descriptions and discussions about CSA and uh, CSA, CSAM, child sexual abuse material. Um, to be clear, Calling it child porn is like a legal term um, in some places, uh, but that's not what it is. It's material that depicts child sexual abuse, and that's fucked up. Um, so uh, just a friendly PSA. Don't call it that. Um, like I said, it's the legal term in some places still, and so that's the verbiage that has to be used in court documents and um, trials and other proceedings and stuff. Um, but generally speaking, it's a much more appropriate term, CSAM, um, rather than trying to make it something that it's not. You know what I'm saying? Um, ba -ba -ba, I finished watching the first video. How far along are, are we? Uh, we're just about to wrap up episode three, and then we're going to get into episode four here in a sec. Uh, okay, let's get back into it. There's two minutes, three seconds left. Uh, we're going to press play. Uh, again, trigger warning for CCM, uh, CSA, all that. Uh, 4513, pressing play in three, two, one. If you'd like to know now... I'm not denying guilt and I'm not I'm not saying that I'm you know I mean as far as anything goes I don't want to be I don't want to say the wrong thing it didn't okay. matter ultimately that Gothard foul the movement goes on the Duggars have exact steps to follow to fulfill the mission of what IBLP is there is a decades-long multi-generational plan to raise up Christian homeschool graduates yep. to infiltrate the highest yep, levels of is. government and the media. You can't be a they them people. You can't. I'm sorry. Pick one or the other at least. They are parroting the older generation. Jim Bob Duggar is running for a seat in the Arkansas Senate. It's really, really that was bold a jump here. to run for office while you have a son on trial for Paul. child sexual assault materials. Thank you so much for joining the channel membership. You just flat out lied. Ooh, yeah, there they are. Uh, Paul, thank you for joining the channel memberships. You're one of us. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, okay. Wow, that was a lot, huh? Uh, we're going to get into episode four. After we take a short break, let me uh, cue that up. Back in ramen for real this time. I love that. Please skip. Okay, uh, we just finished episode three. We're going to watch episode four after we take a short... <laughs> yes, I can be a they, them, and I will. Um, ooh, Mackenzie, that's such a good idea. I feel like I've received that request before. Um, and I would like to do that. Actually, I think I can on the sticker shop. I think they also sell enamel pins. Maybe I'll make some of those. Those would be fun for Pride Month. Um... Uh, yeah, Peyton. And also, too, it's similar to people calling uh, the R word like non-consensual sex um, because, like, the reality is that the R word is not sex, right? It's not that. Um, and it's 
hurtful and harmful um, to survivors to insinuate that it is because they're two entirely distinct and separate uh, experiences. Um, yeah, yeah, Peyton, for sure. Um, well, and it's something that like we as a culture don't really have like vernacular or discussions about. Um, and so it's it's useful to educate about. Uh, this better be four hours long, like last time. <laughs> Listen, facts. Uh, if it keeps going the way that it's going, it's probably gonna be, but okay. Um, oh, Erica, extra gay on your pizza. That sounds great. All right, I'm gonna take a short break. Uh, it is 2 40 right now. We're gonna be back in probably 10 minutes, um, for episode four. So, um, <gasps> Mackenzie, I love that. Um, there is a creator that I follow on TikTok who was talking about how um, the indecision that they faced with pronouns was um, is helpful to conceptualize it from like which pronouns um, give me that euphoric like hell yeah feeling. And so they were like, that's why I started using they them pronouns uh, explicitly. And that's like changed my life. <laughs> that distinction. I love that so much. I am praying for a shirt design that's an open bear trap with the inside of it that says vicious eye trap. That is so specific. Hi, bye. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to make that one uh, come to fruition. I did release a uh, new merch. It is up on the merch store right now if you guys want to buy the Pride merch, by the way. Um, but okay, it's 2.41 now. So I'll be back in 10 minutes, like 2.51-ish. Um, don't forget to hydrate, get a snack, uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll be back in a little bit. Um, that's the wrong button. See you in a hot minute, stream.
Hello, my friends. Welcome back, everybody. Someone should gift. Who's gifting a membership? <clears throat> We're back. Welcome, everybody. Whoa, clean and serene. Gifting five memberships. What the heck? Thank you. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> Yes, we're back. I am back. I also got myself a seltzer to make it through this hellhole of a show. Uh, I did not uh, mix it, though, so hold on. Hold, please. Because <laughs> there's gook at the bottom of this. A space makes delicious ciders, uh, except that there's stuff at the bottom of them sometimes. Um, <laughs> uh, wild story. One of my kids posted a pic of us on her private snap story to people. Whoa, that seems like a violation of your privacy. I am so sorry. Jesus. Okay. Yes. Hi, Natasha. Thank you. Welcome back. Ooh, blackberry cobbler ice cream. I just had a, um, wild berry cobbler cookie it was really good mm. natasha with this two dollar super chat thank you i appreciate you so much all right everybody we are getting through it appreciate the work you've done in creating a safe space oh thank you i appreciate you guys for being here uh, the seltzer I'm drinking is, um, from a brand called A Space. Um, it's a blood orange craft cider and it is so good. Um, I love a good seltzer moment. JFT IBLP survivor. Oh, oh my gosh. I love that. Thank you for being here. That means so much. Um, ba -ba -ba. Uh, I never formally came out. I just said to my mom, you're the cool aunt because you have all the gay kids. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Home keys. That's so cool. Thank you for providing safety for a survivor. Oh, I feel so honored. I feel like weirdly like I'm meeting a celebrity somehow, if that makes sense. Like I am just like blown away that you um, are. I don't know. Like I guess it makes sense that you feel safe and comfortable here. But like, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Katie with the 999 super chat. What the heck? Look at this little guy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your super chat. I appreciate you. Yes, fax machine. It's called Ace Space. Um, I know. Hold on. Let me show you. Watch me get in trouble for this. Eh, eh. There it is. Eh, wrong way. Yeah. Ace Space. Wow, that was a great shot of that. Uh, yes, got to give aces their space. You know what I'm saying? Flutus, not flautus. Thanks for joining the channel memberships. I'm so glad to have you here. Thanks for being one of us. Um, Should I drink some coffee? I don't know, Brandy. Do you want coffee? Or do you, are you in a place for coffee? Anytime that Echelon moves on her piece of paper, it is so alarming to me because I can like sort of hear it with my headphones on, but not exactly. Oh, it's shiny, happy people, Duggar family secrets, but there is a lot of traumatizing and triggering material in here. Um, and so please take care of yourself as you need to. A sports writer with a $5 super chat. Boundaries are hard to set, but so worth the work. They're life-changing and I hope Jill gets peace from doing that. Shout out to my therapist for this. Ah, I love that. Yes, hard agree about all of that. Also, thank you for your $5 super chat. I appreciate you so much. Okay, let's get into it. So we're going to watch episode four. We're starting at zero, 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 zero. Um, pressing play in three, two, one. Great. Ashie is a loaf. She's so cute. Oh, there you go. There's your warning. Hold on. Pause for a hot sec. I'm taking the overlay off so everyone can see it. There you go. Explicit warning. This episode contains themes of SA, CSA, criminal charges around CSAM viewer discretion is advised. Please note for your own safety, my friends. Okay, we're at seven seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. If you want a poncho. So what are you here for? 
We're part of a specialized task force, and that task force is called the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Yep. Based on an ongoing investigation, we were able to get from this IP address uh, one specific video of child pornography and one folder containing approximately 65 images of child pornography. Okay. All right. Is there, some, is there something going on on my devices? That's what led us here, yes. Okay. HSI was in Springdale investigating a business associated with Josh Duggar. I talked to my brother and he said it's just this ex-con that worked at his car lot and it's all going to be fine. This is all going to blow over. It's not true. None of it's true. Echelon is perfection. Ah, the things that children will do when their parents are not around. Do you know that verse that says a child left to itself will bring its mother to shame? That is so true. The son showed up at our door, and they were like, so is it true that your brother's about to be arrested? And I was like, I don't want to comment on that. Well, reality wow. TV star Josh Duggar of 19 and counting fame has been arrested by U.S. Marshals in Arkansas. Disturbing allegations against a member of the Duggar family. I just couldn't believe point. what was in the news. I said, I think we're living in the twilight zone. Josh Duggar indicted for downloading and possessing child pornography. He's facing two counts for receiving and possessing child porn. Mr. Woo, that is a nice uh, time for a palate cleanser. Thank you, Oda2906. Welcome to the channel memberships. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad that you're... Is it lagging? Aw, oh, man. Why? What the hell? Is my internet shitting itself again? Yeah. Like, pretty, pretty great. Oh, is it back? Okay, great. Oh, and it's fine. All right. Well, that was good timing, I guess. God. Um, Coin Mage, you caught your life. Thanks for coming. I appreciate you being here. Uh, it's my first that I mentioned I'm ex-IBLP. Yes. Um, clean and serene. Thank you for being here. I feel like so honored that you want to be here for this. Occasionally lagging. Yes, Michelle. Um, I know. Yeah. Uh, the internet today is just having a time. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. I've already reset my router twice today. We had to restart the fucking stream. Um, I don't know what the deal is. Not an excuse, but I wonder if Michelle is so concerned because she knows she'll be punished for Josh's behavior. Probably. We talked a little bit yesterday, um, Amina, about the duality, um, especially of mothers in IBLP for being both victims and uh, perpetuators of abuse or abusers. Um, and I feel like this is definitely one of those moments where I'm sure that Michelle was either directly or uh, indirectly punished um as being like the one responsible for rearing our children um but also too again like it can't be just excused or written off the way that she abused and neglected her children there's like some pretty um intense trauma that these kids have survived um at the hands of her or like you know at the result of her parenting so it's um like a yes and is it lagging again facts god damn okay whatever um i think i can say with some level of confidence that she's probably more concerned about the movement than herself that's actually a fair point hi bye i'm sure that there's also um a just a, a preoccupation of fixation like an obsession for them with defending and glorifying iblp um i know it's not good to diagnose people um yes my not good to diagnose people um but honestly i have little to zero confidence that anyone in the dog well i guess jill has been to therapy um but especially like michelle and jim bob uh will actually be ever become involved what the fuck why did obs disconnect what the hell is that uh, okay great uh no literally peyton um, we're back now. Yeah, what the fuck was that? I got a notification that my OBS just disconnected and then reconnected. Um, well, great, Lamars. I'm I'm never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> 42 people. Yeah, I know. It's because I'm speaking negatively about Bill Gothard. I'm going to be smited by God. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Golden Wanderer ripped everybody wearing headphones. I am so sorry. <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. 
Um, let's see here. Okay, great. That all looks fine. Discord, how's everything in there? Are we disconnecting and reconnecting in Discord? Uh, just a friendly reminder to like the stream. Thank you, Peyton. Yeah, if you're new here, um, and you want to and you like it here, you can uh, like the stream or subscribe to the channel because we talk about this stuff. We talk about other stuff. Cute educational moment every now and again. So, uh, Discord's fine. We're good. We're doing pretty good here. Okay, great. I love that Discord has been mostly unaffected by the fuckery today. If that's not uh, a selling point for our Patreon, I don't know what is. <laughs> What about Morgan saying they wanted to be a light to one person through their show? Oh, we're going to talk about that, Julia. That's happening in this episode, but we have not talked about it yet. So we're going to get into it. Um, speaking of which, let's get back into this. Uh, we're at 1 minute 42 seconds. Pressing play in 3, 2, 1. Mr. Duggar, did you download child pornography onto your computer? He didn't say anything to the medium. Got into that black SUV waiting for him and drove off. A spokesperson for TLC tells ET that the network will not be moving forward with the Duggar family's reality series. Oh it's like the epitome of evil. I don't think there's anything worse. Oh, I'll explain it in a second, Christine. Getting good with chopstick, home keys. Love that. Bobby says, Jim. We have company, it's Homeland Security. They sit down and say, Mr. Holt, I'm sure you know why we're here. He starts talking, he goes, well, it's about Josh Duggar. They said it wasn't about um, his past history. It was something different. Oh, God. I texted Josh and I just said, hey, I'm hearing rumors, is that even true? And he's like, absolutely not, like, especially if something of that nature. The Duggar family released a statement, quote, as to any investigation being conducted, to our knowledge, no member of our family is a target of any investigation. On the day that a family statement's put out, we know that the family had knowledge that there's a child pornography investigation against Josh, and they had that knowledge on the same day that they made the statement. Yeah, you might have fooled the public, but like, eventually, if there's something to this, Oof. people are gonna realize it. I think we were so we curious that that to just lie. see how everything unfolded and to get the truth. Testimony began today in the trial of Josh Duggar. After opening statements, prosecutors presented the jury with a computer that was found at Duggar's car dealership. The entire Fundy Snart community obviously had a vested interest in this story, and I followed it very closely. The prosecution was able to point out every single time Josh downloaded these images, they have it pinpointed to the exact moment. The agent also says that Duggar had a program on his computer called Covenant Eyes, which the agent called accountability software. With Covenant Eyes, I'm winning the fight against porn every day. Oh my Covenant God. Eyes makes reports of all the websites you've been on and it sends them to a trusted accountability buddy. While the public facing portion of the computer appeared to be mostly business related, the hard drive had in fact been split in two. Josh has always been known to be tech savvy. He would have been the only one who knew how to circumvent the Covenant Eyes software. The agent described the images as in the top five whoa, of the worst of whoa. the worst. Oh, Jesus. God, like, again, I'm glad that they're including it so that people understand the full scope of what's going on, but God damn. Um, Jen is literally like the Teletubby son. <laughs> Peyton, that's so sweet. Um,. Before we, yeah, so Covenant Eyes, um, like Jen said, it is a, an accountability software commonly used on uh, the Fundy computers, especially when someone has a past. Um, usually it's used to monitor and like create, you know, like so much shame around your internet habits um, that you won't do it for like regular or like, yeah, regular porn um, not that there's anything, other, whatever you get what I'm saying. Um, but, uh, obviously in this case, it was, um, relevant to Josh for other reasons. Um, yeah. So, um, I do just want to clarify before we move forward. Um, there have been a lot of issues, especially in the Fundy Snark subreddit, not a lot of issues, but some, I suppose, uh, with folks describing the material that Josh allegedly downloaded. Um, please don't do that. Please don't do that in my chat. Um, there is plenty of discussion about what specifically um, took place. Um, 
Yeah, no, 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 Felicia, please, God, no. Um, like, love and respect, Felicia, but I'm muting or, like, hiding that. Um, because we're not doing that. Um, I, yeah, the, the thing is that there, again, there's plenty of discussion about what it is that took place, um, in other places on the internet, but A, it's a fucking button for me. Um, there are, like, very few things in this world that make me, like, actively nauseous, and that's one of them. Um, and B, um, it's super fucking triggering. Like, this is already very triggering. Yeah, Felicia, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. But, um, yeah, please don't put stuff like that in the chat, you guys, because, um, it is just, like, a fucking world of awful. Aaron just got home. Hi, lovey. Um, and also we can appreciate the gravity of, um, how shitty of a person Josh is without, um specifically or explicitly describing that material i don't know to what degree they're going to go into it in the show um if that's the case we may very well fast forward because i just don't have the bit yeah nope nope we're not talking about that um no felicia you're fine um and it's not it's not a you thing specifically um I, like i said there have been issues with this on all of the fundy snark subreddits on the duggar snark subreddit this is a thing that has happened um commonly when people discuss this um but i just want everyone to be mindful that everyone has a different threshold for like what they're able um to consume in terms of content and so like for this space specifically um we're not we're not doing that yeah goosey moosies exactly um okay great thank you Brittany. i wasn't sure what the deal is um aaron has been watching the stream on and off um but he was at work today he had to work this weekend so um, he was watching little bits here and there as he could. Um, okay. They kind of did display it on screen. Yeah, I mean, they showed, like, text descriptions of some of it. Um, but, yeah, well, yeah, clean and serene, especially knowing that some of y'all are, like, survivors of this specific community. We don't want to be, um, pushing that button at all, but especially for y'all, so. Okay. Uh, we're at four minutes, 11 seconds. We're going to press play. Um, like I said, I may very well fast forward and I'll just update you guys with the timestamp if I need to. So pressing play in three, two, one. That he has ever examined the things. No, we're fast forwarding. Sorry. Uh, we're at 426. We're at 426 now. So we're going to press play in three, two, one. You sometimes feel like you failed. Could we have tried more? When it's a friend doing things that are so vile and so wicked yeah Miriam. that part really hurts great that's why Thank i cry they seemed like such good people the sweetest family the way the show portrayed them was perfect everything was always sunshiny and rosy yes, i really think people lie. put them on a pedestal but we know because for a fact that there. there was such heartache that they really did just have to put a face on. They have to be happy all the time. They can never show real emotion. I know, Remy. They can never deal with what could be rumbling inside of their hearts. Well, you guys can't kiss yet, but you can hold hands. <laughs> That's right. Your first We'll do kiss. the kissing. We'll do the kissing. Bill, there's a chance to tell us and we'll kiss. Ew. That's We've so prepared gross. him all these years for this moment. And I Thanks, just Brittany. am excited I about their future. Josh Duggar is charged with one yeah, count of gross. possession of child pornography. And if convicted, he could face up to 20 years in prison and a 200. There was an evidentiary hearing to determine what evidence would be given at trial. The prosecution wanted to see if they could use the prior allegations of Josh molesting his sisters. Nobody obviously wants to testify, but I was prepared to testify against my brother. I guess they got what they needed from somebody else and didn't have to wow. have me testify. Today, okay, the so jury was heard from former Duggar. Hold on, pause. That's noteworthy because there was rumors she was on the witness list, but I don't think she ever did testify. So people were unsure what the deal is, but I am surprised that she, I guess I'm not surprised, but like that she clarified that. Yes, this is so harmful, Sarah. Um, no, Brandy, we're on episode four. So we're six minutes, eight seconds into episode four. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Hi, Dream Flux. Thanks for coming. Um, 
Yes, I know. I am really excited that Jill is being so forthcoming with like the details, like the behind the scenes stuff related to this. Because again, I just think it's important for people to have the full picture. Yeah, issue. That was my thought also. Okay, let's keep going. 608, pressing play in three, two, one family friends. I had took the stand and I really felt like it was important to acknowledge to everyone in the room and everyone that might hear this that God knows that I'm going to tell the truth and I have to stand before him one day for what I say or what I don't say or what I do and what I don't do and so I did. I said I do so help me God. Artemis, The jury yes. got to see that there is a pattern in Josh's life that he began early on and he got by with it time and time again. Bobby Holt was exposing everybody because she was saying everybody knew this was an open secret. Josh had molested several of his sisters and they swept it under the rug. That was a huge relief when I was done. It was almost like we had waited all of these years yeah. just to be able to say that and we were taken seriously. Yes. I have At one point, Jim Bob that. told you you were jealous. He said, Jim Bob, I would not trade places with you for a bazillion dollars. Morning, Jim Bob. How you doing today, sir? Jim Is Bob. Who All right, hold on. We're pausing because Aaron's here. Hi. How are you? Good. Cat cam. So you just put your crotch on camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Lower. Lower. There you go. That's just your mouth. Just your mouth. <laughs> Yeah, that's your eyeball and your nose. Hi, Pumpkin. I missed you. I any boogers. No, I think you're clear. Chat says hi. So hi. Oh, Aaron says hi. Hello, chat. <laughs> yeah, Gabby, I'm not sure I like the Holtz either. Um, <laughs> I, um, sorry, I just saw a comment from Brandy about um, Aaron coming to save me. Um, yeah. You need more drinky fluids? Oh, you're No, I today. have a cider. You need water? There's no water here. Can I have some water? Yeah, you should probably have some water. Thanks, Pumpkin. No, it's all good. Um, I don't know how I feel about the Holtz talking about how, um, you know, it was like a, a relief to get all of that off their chest. Like, yes, I'm very grateful that Bobby testified truthfully and, like, blew the lid off of a lot of stuff. Um... But also it does kind of feel like like she could have done that sooner. You know what I'm saying? Like she could have independently informed police about what was going on years ago and like she didn't. Um Aaron with the 399 super chat. Thank you. Look at this little sticker. Is that a high five? Thank you. I appreciate you so much. I know. Echelon does look sleepy. Mm-hmm. My feelings about the Holtz are also quite complicated. Mm-hmm. Hi, Gemma Bell. Do you want me to call you Gemza Bell? Is that better? I mean, they knew about Josh for a long time, but they never brought it to justice. Yeah. And I think, Gabby, the other thing that's complicated about the Holtz is that um, Jill and her sisters clearly did not want that information made public. And so in some ways, she would have violated their wishes by exposing that to the public, um, which is disrespectful to victims, right? We literally talked about that earlier. But also at the same time, it kind of feels a little bit it feels some type of way that Bobby is talking about this as if she didn't have the opportunity to speak about this before now, you know? Um, and again, it's complicated because there are layers of like victimhood versus perpetuating abuse here because she is a woman in this very patriarchal and oppressive culture, but I don't know. Yeah. And she has a order of protection against her, um, well against Jim now. So I'm not really sure what that's about, but Hello. Tell well, everyone to make sure they stay hydrated. I know we've been talking about that, except I'm being a hypocrite because I'm not hydrating myself. I know I broke my pen the other day. I'm so sad about it. Mm hmm. Or just Jem is fine. Okay, great. Perfect. I will call you Jem. How is Bobby related to Josh? So Bobby and Jim Holt were good friends of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar uh, from the time that their kids were very, very small. Um, they are not related to them by blood, but they are uh, or were very much members of IBLP, subscribe to the same beliefs, put their kids through the same homeschooling curriculum, all of that stuff, um, and gradually distance themselves apparently after the initial allegations of Josh's misconduct with his family came to light. 
I know. Aaron really does be scaring Echelon. Echelon's such a, a gentle little soul. Um, ba -ba -ba. Catch me up. What time are we at? So, Rachel, we are in episode four. We're at seven minutes, 21 seconds. Uh, we saw about we fast forwarded a little bit because uh they highlighted some text from the reports about josh's arrest that were pretty triggering um but right now we're covering more of the trial stuff um as it relates to josh's conviction last year i think it was last year echelon is loafing on her paper yes um aaron lee i'm so glad that you're here thanks for um being here for the stream I'm excited to talk about it. Um, maybe excited is the wrong word, but, um, you know, glad, I guess, that we can talk about this and that this is being platformed because it's like very much a conversation that needs to be had. Uh, I had dry mouth from the drop jaw for four hours straight. Yeah, Aaron, I'm feeling that. OK, we're at 721. Uh, we're going to press play in three, two, one. Who you see entering court here testified too about what his son told him. Oh yes, Mary, relevant detail. At one point, the prosecuting attorney came up to him and she says, here's the police report. Do you recognize the things that you said in there? And he goes, well, I don't recall really. The fact that he can say that he doesn't remember his own daughter's abuse makes me sick. He kept answering all the questions like, I don't recall, I don't remember, that was so long ago. He just flat out lied. That happened with Joshua Duck. Tonight, 19 Kids and Counting star Jim mm -hmm. Bob Duggar announcing today that he is running for a seat in the Arkansas Senate. As soon as I heard it, I absolutely just could not believe it. He actually texted person. you, didn't he? And sent you his website with the donation page. Yeah. yeah. The news of Duggar's candidacy comes amid a federal child porn investigation against his son. I got a news alert on my phone and I was like, what the what? <laughs> It's really, really bold to run for office while you have a son on trial for child sexual assault materials. But that Thank is basically you, the embodiment Heather. of a fundamentalist dad. Duggar said in a news release today that he is running because of what he called out of control bureaucrats. We heard uh, reports of conspiracy Ugh, theories. The audacity. Things like Josh's trial would never happen. If Trump were still in office, this is an Obama appointed judge. He was just grasping for anything. I don't think that he believed for a second that he was wrong. Satan's using this as a distraction to your me. family and to bring down your ministry. So still run for office because you're still going to do God's work. There is a world system that's being controlled by Satan that needs to be stood up against. That sort of mindset comes from the Institute. We are in a culture war. We want to see that culture war won by the Lord. Jim Bob lost, but their goal was to have one generation start off this godly chain of events that the next generation would amplify until we essentially took over the entire world for Jesus Abby, Christ. That was their stated goal. There is always a bigger agenda. You wouldn't go to war in ancient times with a quiver of arrows that only has one or two arrows in it. You want as many arrows as you can to shoot at the enemy. That's what we're supposed to do with our children. Nurture them and grow them, and then send them out into the world as strong arrows to have an impact on the world. The real story behind the Duggars is a much bigger one. The Joshua generation is, is one of the most ambitious plots of modern evangelical history, and almost no one has ever heard of it. It's a okay. decades-long, multi-generational plan to Joshua raise generation. up an elite strike force of Christian homeschool graduates to infiltrate the highest levels of government. My name is Alex Harris. I'm a graduate of Harvard Law School, and I was a law clerk for Justice Anthony Kennedy of the U.S. Supreme yeah, Court. Brandy, the I was I previously one of the leaders of the Joshua Generation Movement. A lot of the men who came up... All right, hold on, pause. Um, yeah, the Joshua Generation terminology is new to me. I've never heard of that. Um, this is why I stopped watching the hand. Oh, sports writers, same. Too much. Um, so glad I've got a mask on my face. My friend, other shoppers. Um, yes, Joshua is in the Bible, Joshua. Fair enough. Um, can we just talk about how absolutely mind-blowing it is, though, that these people, um, besides all of the obvious, uh, 
fuckery that's happening here. Um, also feel so bold and empowered to say that our children who've been homeschooled uh, with uh, such famous one-liners as fractions are all you need to know because that's what you use in baking um, and like frequent misspellings um, in all of their social media posts are people who really feel like, yes, I am qualified to run for office. Fucking hello. Like I have a master's degree and I don't feel qualified to run for office. <laughs> Be Like being a, a appointed member of uh, the legislature is such a serious and like intense responsibility. And these people are really pumping out homeschooled kids who don't know the difference between there, there and there and being like, yes, that's fine. <laughs> run for office. Like what? Yeah. Dunning-Kruger effect. It does. Yeah, it does kind of feel that way. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. But of course, the LGBTQ is indoctrinating people. Right. Um, I know. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yuck. Uh, yay, Issa B. Work's finally done. Love that. Okay. Uh, 11.05. We're pressing play in three, two, one with the idea for the Joshua generation were influenced by Gothard, attending IPLP seminars and espousing quiverful ideals. Gothard was the template. Yeah. He's got his hands in everything. Their kids were supposed to be this force that was gonna conquer for the kingdom of God. The whole purpose was really to position kind of the best and the brightest of the Christian homeschool movement to assume positions of power and influence in government and in the law. The goal was Christian homeschool graduates who would be Team U.S. Packs. senators, who would be U.S. Ooh. presidents, and most importantly, who would be U.S. Supreme Court justices in order to bring America back to its rightful position as a, as a truly Christian nation. It starts in high school with organizations Ooh. like Team Pause. Uh, Tatum, thanks so much for joining the channel memberships. Hi, just joining for the live. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad that you're one of us, my friend. Um, I have zero kids and three kitties. It can't be done. <laughs> um, but, but yes, this is terrifying. Drape flux. That's what I was just thinking. This is like something out of a, a dystopian graphic novel. This doesn't feel real. I know. Especially, Andy, after the um, Roe v. Wade situation, this uh, hits too close to home for me. The thing is that institutions like Harvard run primarily on alumni, families, and nepotism. So if they can make connections with politicians, they don't have to be really well educated. That is such a good point, Daisy and Blue, actually. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up because I think that's also worth discussing. Are you okay? No, of course. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I think I need to go pace while I watch that weird. No, Brandy. Um, also, feel free to tap out, you know, like this is triggering. So if you need to take a break, there's absolutely no shame in that. Um, okay. We're at 1158. Pressing play in three, two, one. Pact and Generation Joshua, which were giving homeschool teenagers civics training, organizing training. Vote for Mike! These volunteers are Huck's Army, drawn here by Oops. Alex and Brett Harris. There were worldview camps and there were homeschool debate clubs that you could take on any like liberal or atheist argument or statement and debunk it. It's how we defend our faith, the training ground for the real battleground that is the dark world outside. We would go to the Capitol all the time. I knew all of our representatives and I knew the senators so that we could say, hey, this is what we want. We want you to vote this way. We were loud politically. God. You take these kids and give them training in political engagement. And then from there, you send them into the halls of Congress, into the White House as interns. You had institutions of higher up. education. First and, and foremost, Patrick Henry College, where I became positioned to do all of the things that, that I have done since. PhD graduates have served as press secretaries in the White House, Senate, and House of Representatives, have excelled at the FBI, CIA, and the Department of Homeland God, Security. This Clerking is for so Supreme Court annoying. justices, being in Trump's cabinet, they're popping up everywhere if you look for them. Meet Elise Hall. She's 21 and just won election to the Oklahoma State House of Representatives. 
your left wing movement is forcing children to endure radical expressions of sexuality. Oh, the most God. prominent member Not of Madison the Joshua Cawthorn. generation was Madison Cawthorn. Madam Speaker, a silent genocide has slipped beneath the conscience of America. I hope Congress. In this morning, North Carolina Congressman Madison Cawthorn addressing a new round of allegations. Cawthorn was aggressive, misogynistic, and predatory towards what women. A the surprise. most prominent leaders in this movement get caught up in abuse scandals, and the communities are really trained to move on. One of the Duggars is now running for Arkansas of State course, Representative yeah. in 2020. Talk about that. I'm a Christian, and I will stand up for religious liberties. I'm pro-life, and I will be an advocate for the unborn. In a sweeping ruling that overturned a half a century of precedence, five justices ended the right of American women to choose abortion under the Constitution. This isn't just about passing a law in this moment. It's about so much more. They're looking generations ahead. They're playing the long game. Yeah. It's always been oh, it's all bad. encouraged to use whatever technology is available to you to further the Christian agenda. Like the Duggars. So yeah, now you have influencer culture. You have the rise of Christian influencers oh God, it's on you Instagram, guys. on TikTok. No, God did not make you gay. Does a thief come out born a thief? Social media seems oh, almost tailor-made for fundamentalism because it allows these ideas a broader audience than they've ever had before. Here it is. And they just so boldly and confidently speak like the Bible is true, creation is true. We believe this. And people Great say Paul and Morgan are funny. Is this channel called Paul and Morgan? Ooh. Guys, if you're new here, we're making Christian advice videos on I'm life. Surprised they pulled love, stuff out of their old dating. content. Woo! 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 We met in a unconventional way <laughs> for Christians anyways <laughs> uh, we met on tinder breaking news they are parroting these ideals of the older generation one major area in which God began to really work in my heart was in the air of submission mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. husband yeah they actually sat for an interview and they asked me not to wear pants and I was out from under his authority again. This is wild. They're very much passing it down and making it cool and trendy. Same book, different cover. And what is the role of the wife? So the role of the wife is to submit to your husband's, which, ooh, scary word, submit. Very scary. <laughs> it's a choice to submit. We do our YouTube channel and- I like how they can't even uh, not make a joke out of something while they're being interviewed for a, like a real ass documentary. Um, it's so gross. Uh, ooh, gonna go play board games. Love that, Jane. Uh, take care of yourself. Uh, have the most fun. Yeah, Christine, I, you know what? I, I think they really did think this was going to be like pro Christianity. I think they were gonna, their impression is that they would be positioned as like, the alternative to the Duggars. I don't think Paul and Morgan see themselves, excuse, as fundies, which is wild to me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they really did this as a plug. Please, God, don't let this result in, like, increased traffic for their channel. <laughs> uh, they thought, that, I know, I think they did, Sarah. I think they thought that they were really doing something with this. Okay, we're at 1625. We're going to press play. Three, two, one share the word of god because if we can be a light even to one person out of a million like praise god Bad. you can't be a they them people you can't i'm sorry pick one or the other at least social media <laughs> can take something fringe oh my it god it's so disgusting oh, it's so not shocking the disaster and move them into the center of no. our conversation some of you might go Yo, to be jump scared day and night for all of eternity they're trying to present it as cool my seven tips oh it's like a who's who's the worst mainstream worst. christians posting the umbrella of authority no Aaron, treat your not husband as the head of the household and obey him and I want to just grab them by the shoulders and say, no, that was made by a cult leader. Christian women should dress oh, modestly. On. You wouldn't repost something by Charles Manson. Don't do this. God is trying to warn his children. Not Brittany oh, Dawn. Oh, and God's Emma. God's truth, God's truth. Biblical morality. Oh. It's so bad. <laughs> wow, they really pulled out all the stuff. That's the Joshua huh? generation. 
today. Them it's both for life, and privilege to join in this announcement of a guilty verdict in the nice. case of the United States versus Josh Duggar. Mm -hmm. Watch no me. one is above the law, and that's what this case demonstrates. Amy called me on the phone about the verdict, Aaron, and yes. I Same. said, well, Amy, justice has been served. I just felt like a flood of relief for the girls. Well, Never having to like say, I lie. forgive you. You didn't do anything wrong. It's okay. Never having to face him knowing what he's done and not be heard. And we just hugged. We just sat there and hugged probably two, three minutes. Because yeah. it felt like it was going to finally come to an end. Well, except that it's hey, not, you though. At this time, I have not spoken to my brother about any of this. He needs to apologize to a lot of people. Oh my also, God. yeah, actually, I want to address something that Natasha said. Um, yes, uh, Days in Blue, that too. But um, I think the fact that Paul and Morgan's short little blip was followed by, like, if immediately followed by coverage of this really horrific abuse, um, coverage of this trial, like a discussion about the sort of long term impacts of all of this and that their gripe, I guess, is that they weren't represented positively enough, says so much about their perspective, um, about the lens through which they make content. I feel like it's just really important to highlight that and like hold that up for examination <laughs> um because the degree to which they are self-focused to which they are self-obsessed is just astounding and also in my opinion speaks to the mental gymnastics that folks in this content niche perform on a regular basis paul and morgan genuinely I, I don't know if they watched the whole thing but I'm assuming they at least watched a few minutes on either side of their segment and genuinely walked away from this documentary with a feeling of like hurt and and self-righteous indignation um about their edit as opposed to absorbing any gravity for the way that this movement has harmed uncounted amounts of lives like hello like, let's just use our adult brains here for like five seconds <laughs> to think about, even if they don't actually care, the fact that they're not aware that the optics of centering themselves in a discussion that is largely about survivors of trauma is very telling to me, in my opinion. Um, I just, yeah. It, <laughs> sorry, you were portrayed honestly. Yes. Um... They don't have the capacity for absorption. I've seen a lot of people talk about that, too. And when they say and, and do stuff, when they behave in this way, it does uh, come across that way. They were sandwiched between Madison Cawthorn and Josh Duggar. Yes, 100%. Yeah, time to reflect on their life choices. Um, Paul and Morgan are in the space where young Christians start their journey into radicalization. That is a fair point issue. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's clear that the document documentary um, portrayed them in a way that's meant to highlight the juxtaposition between the way that they describe themselves and the way that they actually conduct themselves. And Paul and Morgan are just experiencing a lot of discomfort, I think, about having that outlined so explicitly. A uh, slight palate cleanser. I realized how healing it is to be acknowledged by Mickey on lives because I have trauma about not being able to emotionally affect my parents. Ah, oh, hi, bye. I'm so sorry that that's happened to you. I'm glad that this space is like safe and healing, though. Um, big love to you. Uh, as I sometimes want to say about my some narcissistic family, it's not always about you. Oh, yeah. Sports writer. 100%. Um, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed something. Okay, I don't know where I went. Um. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, great. Sorry, moving on. Uh, we're at 1836. Uh, 17 minutes, 28 seconds left. So we're going to press play in 3, 2, 1. It does control a lot of things in the family. Family relationships were already kind of rocky. I reached out to TLC to ask for all contracts that I had been involved in. 
my parents had signed for a bunch of the kids who were no longer minors, including myself. I became an adult in 2009. As the kids age to adulthood, they're still listed as minors and nobody fixed that. What? Everything within the family cool? Can do that? has shifted and not for the better. We're very much on the outside with the family. They don't not talk surprised. to us. And so for us, we don't know what's going on. We have no idea. We typically find out what's going on through, through the media. People Magazine, through In Touch, through E. I try to look back at a Javaba Michelle that we loved. It was really hard because it's just like you've lost your best friend. It's going to change our family. It already has completely. Well, yes. I have a notebook full of IBLP rules. So I took these notes in the living room with the other kids, my other cousins. Who yeah. you down? Jim Bob, of course. Values to be a good wife. It says, he is your leader. Your husband is your leader. Would you have ever dreamed on your 20th birthday? Loyalty can be demonstrated only in adversity. Oh, yuck. Think about that. Think about what that teaches. Jump scare. Teaches you that you have no way out. And no matter what they do, loyalty will shine through in adversity. How messed up is that? And people say that be loyal to Anna's God, be loyal to your leaving. parents and that authority, and be willing to love your Look spouse. At, it's just so brainwashed. Even when it hurts. Do you, have any comments, Anna? you think 12 Everybody years is fair, Anna? This comes up with Anna Duggar a lot. Mm -hmm. Why can't she just leave? Oh, just let's take a look at why she just can't leave. Okay, so Thank she's raised without an education. Yes. She was chosen for Joshua Duggar. Her duty is to him to be pleasing in every way, all ways, even if he's not there. She has a bevy of children with him. Yep. We all out here know that somebody like that would find resources. Mm -hmm. She'd have a book deal so fast, but she doesn't know that. She probably doesn't know the truth of her situation. Yes. Josh was my first love. He's my one and only. My only hope was to cling to my faith because I think in the stun and in the shock of everything, I was just praying God help, help me to know how to respond to all of this. Young, Ooh, idealistic people gives me can get tangled time. up in that stuff all of the time, as I know firsthand. And in Real here, quick, I caught some heat for talking about Anna Duggar in this way because there are a lot of people who are like, she could have a book deal, she should leave, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I just am glad that uh, Tia spoke about this because, like, yes, while technically that is true, I don't know that Anna Duggar is really in a position to actually make those choices. Um, and again, this is why that conversation about the duality of being a victim and an abuser or like an enabler is so important because yes, she is actively continuing to put her children in harm's way, which is something that she should be held accountable for and something that people should draw attention to. And also, I think it's clear that she's been brainwashed and, and coerced and manipulated and abused to a really high degree, right? Like, you can't acknowledge one without acknowledging the others. Um, I don't think Anna graduated eighth grade. I don't know if I have a fact check for that, Lucy. Um, but like, again, given what we know about the way that folks in IBLP were educated, I would not be surprised to know that she has a minimal education. I mean, there was a, a person earlier who talked about being uh, explicitly told by their father that they were only going to learn math uh, related to like fractions so that she could cook and bake and that's it like this is the norm in that culture i would not be surprised at all to also know because of the way that they view authority and the transfer of authority if she's under the impression that jim bob is now her authority and we all know that jim bob probably has not let her within 50 feet outside of that house or that compound for for any opportunity to get uh, resources or help or an outside perspective or anything like i would be shocked beyond belief to know uh, if she was ever anywhere that wasn't explicitly being chaperoned by one of the, the Duggars. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm amazed she can get out of bed. Well, also, too, yeah, Natasha, I feel like that's important to note, too, that, like, her entire worldview um, has been shaped around this idea that if you do the right thing, that good things will befall you. And then the worst thing that could possibly happen to her happened to her. And so the shame and guilt must be off the charts. I'm sure she's being gaslighted beyond belief about how this is all her fault and she needs to repent and try harder and do better and blah, blah, blah. Like the the amount of manipulation and abuse of power and control uh, that's probably befallen this woman after all of this took place uh, is just unspeakable. Yeah, I would have watched this docu already, but I think the best way to experience it where there's a buffer. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez, I feel that. Honestly, I say this all the time, but I don't think I would watch this stuff if it weren't for um, watching it in community. I really do think it makes the abject horror of it all just slightly less bad. Um. Oh, yes. Anna took the kiddos to the zoo in ripped jeans just two weeks after the jail sentence. She did? Clean and serene? Um... Da, ba, 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 diploma from ATI. Seriously, Anna did get a homeschool diploma, but her mom dropped out in eighth. Oh, okay. Um, the desire to get blind drunk. <laughs> the makings of Margarita. Um, also, have you guys heard that Margarita song on TikTok? Because it's a vibe. I love it. Um, her dad dropped out at age 17. That's the other thing about the homeschooling in IBLP that gives me the shivers is that the people who are doing the homeschooling have minimal education themselves. And so besides the fact that they have just deplorable material to work with, um, yeah, AJ, good point. Um, (laughs) Uh, they also are being educated by someone who has an incomplete education themselves. And so it will just continue to get worse over time, you know? Um, but, but, but clean and serene. That's wild. I did not know that she went to the zoo in ripped jeans. What's that about? Um, and her parents practice radical forgiveness. Oh, yuck. Days in blue. Anyone else need <laughs> brandy? I have a cider. Um, mm-hmm. Peyton for real. Okay, let's get back into it. Oops, I just gleaked. Um, 2130. Pressing play in three, two, one. Is Tia doing dishes again? In fundamentalism, suffering means holiness. So I was just tapping into that narrative of, you're too happy, something's wrong. In October of 2007, my husband followed me around the house for four hours with a length of firewood, promising to bludgeon me to death. And then out oh of the blue, he goes, God. I'm out of here. And I heard a voice in my head that said, run, right now. So I went and got the kids, I put them in the car, and he had gone back to his office to get his gun. (gasps) And if I had stayed home, we would be dead. My God. I escaped by the skin of my teeth. So I'm never gonna say it's easy. Wow. For me and a lot of other survivors, Josh's trial has given me a lot of hope. I hope for a reckoning. Wow. A I'm group still of women from that. come My forward God. and sue IBLP, and then a little bit later on, add Gothard into that lawsuit. The allegations are that Gothard bye, bye, bye. sexually abused and harassed them. IBLP as an organization knew and chose to look the other way. I was very aware of the lawsuit when it popped up against Bill Gothard. Um, I was aware of it far before it became public because I was asked to be a part of it. And I turned it down because I was petrified. I know. At the time, I felt that I would be in danger. So I joined the lawsuit as Jane Doe number three. When you join a lawsuit, it's constantly rehashing Mm. the most horrific memories of your life and telling them again and again. If you decide to move forward in a case, it's also important that you realize the emotional toll that is going to continue to take on you. Quite frankly, the cost was too high. One of our factors was statute of limitations. And the lawsuit was dismissed. I knew that the organization was big enough. I knew that they had a lot of money. I was just like, there is no way. I mean, it is literally a David and Goliath situation here. Yeah, that's fair. Gothard had a lot of money and resources, so he countersued some of the original plaintiffs. He was asking us. Hold on, sorry. 
Uh, Tatum, thank you so much for the four ninety nine dollars super chat. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. That's awful, and that's not anything that anyone deserves. My God. Um, impeccable timing, though, Tatum. Thank you for uh, the much-needed break. Um, Ju Jutia? Julia? Uh, I'm happy that you caught the live, too. Thank you for being here. Um, the lawsuit might be dropped, but <laughs> yes, uh, Bill Gothard still sucks. Um, <laughs> yes, Jem, we love the gays here. We are the gays here, in fact. Um, ba -ba -ba, so much to unpack. Oh, yeah. I am hope, I hope that these people are right, um, that this will serve as a, a, a reckoning or a catalyst of some kind, because it just feels wild that this is not being talked about more or like pursued more from a legal perspective i hope that this results this like um accumulates to something you know <laughs> artemis gays unite yes um i really do need to make a pride emote okay we're at 2357 and we are pressing play in three two one to pay approximately eighteen thousand a piece what and now the plaintiffs were on the defense my friend Amy and I heard they're going to have a hearing about this in Chicago. And so I tell Amy, we've got to go. The victims feeling validated and feeling heard was really the thing at stake here. To me, that's not Sarah, even 100%. scratching the surface of what they're owed and what all of us are owed. There were literally hundreds of thousands of children raised in this ATI program under these same teachings. John Cornish, one of the co-founders of Recovering Grace, gives me Bill Gothard's phone number. And so I decide, well, we're in Chicago. Why don't we go over to his house? Bill Gothard kind of came to loom over my life, even as an adult. Bill Gothard used to speak to stadiums, you know, every week, and now he just sits alone in his house. This kind of Peter Pan-like character living in the home he's lived in his entire life. He was waiting at the front door, wearing a full suit, a tie, he had done his hair. His entire living room is covered in boxes all copies of the 37 self-published books that he's written. We sit down and he says that he wants to pray for me. And so he looks at the floor and- All right, hold on, pause. Uh, Tatum, thank you so much for the 499. She said she meant by saying I'm too gay that I'm too happy. That sounds like a lie. Um, but also I meant what I said. I am proud of you for being exactly who you are. And that person sounds like a jerk. So I think that you, someone said it earlier, but I think you, you do deserve better. We deserve friends who love us, who aren't, uh, like backhanded compliments. That's rude. Also, yeah. Why would you not want friends that are happy? Even if that were <laughs> true. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, 2535 pressing play in three, two, one closes his eyes and I look at the floor and close my eyes and then I realize why am I why am I pretending right now so I open my eyes and when I do he's looking at me his eyes are open it was kind of like you know looking the devil in the eye in that moment yeah. everything made sense to me his word his principles this is what God accomplished through my life about wisdom in God's word, love for the Lord, vision for what you could do. This is creepy. It was just a man the whole time. When I testified Thanks, in court I too in front of him, blue. I locked eyes with Bill. I had taken my power back. I had taken my voice back. After a full day of testimony, the judge denied Gothard's sanctions. He found our testimony to be credible, and we got to walk out of that courtroom victorious. Ma, hmm. what? Well, if you go on ATI's website, it says ATI was a homeschooling program from 1984 to 2021. 
As of now, ATI doesn't exist anymore, and they're just selling all of these wisdom booklets as a Bible study available to anyone who wants to buy it. Booklets that we were forced to use, they are now diminishing it to, you know, a goddamn Bible study. At face value, I take it as a victory because I think that they're scared, but IBOP there. still exists. This is the first I'm hearing about it, as are yeah. several of the ATI survivors. There's things that Bill Gothard stole from us that we could never get back, like our childhoods. And there's so wow. many people who grew up in this educationally neglectful homeschool program and now are struggling financially to get by. Damn. When you grow up in such a stringent belief system, Hi, I think that the natural yes. impulse is just to rebel against it. <sighs> I had been rejecting my upbringing for so long, I realized that I'd ended up kind of empty inside. I first read The Handmaid's Tale in college. I was like, oh, this, this is my life. <laughs> What was going oh, on real. with me and my father around that time period was a power struggle over, you know, whether or not he considered me to be an adult or somebody like totally under his authority. It really did nice. create a sense of urgency in me to start trying to understand what the fuck I had been raised in. Fair. We got married in 2005 and in 2012 is when, you know, the curtain dropped. I ended up having a lot of health issues after having our son. All of this medical, you know, stuff was exploding. I'm having strokes and sick, and then oh my God. unbeknownst to me, because I was in survival mode. I was, I gave up. I was, I, I was checked out. I started drinking. And we separated. I was uh, a single mom for a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, he had a lot of. I had a lot of time to drink. And this cult, the whole fear of your kids ending up bad or ending up doing drugs, ending up in jail or whatever, I ended up in jail anyways. In my 20s, I started shoplifting and I didn't know why I did it. I didn't need anything. I was in jail several times, one time for about a week. I sought out an addiction recovery program. The first thing they had me do in their 12-step program was talk about and confront my childhood, which I had never done before. One time at work, I just absolutely just had a overwhelming sense of panic. So I started going to a counselor. We spent about three whole sessions talking about, well, let's talk about your upbringing first. What was that like? She said, you're exhibiting a lot of the same symptoms that people who were raised Brandy, in high controlling yeah, yeah. religious groups show. And she said, and honestly, you need to start considering reaching out beyond what you were taught, maybe going to other churches. Put your hand down if you decided to make your first TikTok video about how your parents joined a cult when you were 12. Deconstruction is deciding for yourself if the things you were taught is really the truth you believe in. And if it's not, what would it look like? Do you even believe in God? Hey, I'm Heather, and I was raised in this cult. Deconstructing is- right, Hold on, pause. Um, I adore people who deconstruct together and heal either as a couple or separately, but supportive. Yes, Gem. Um, Ba -ba -ba. Hold on, there's something I missed. Uh, that's the curriculum my parents used to homeschool me. It's awful. Oh, Chloe, I'm so sorry. Fuck. Um, you're certainly not alone here, if that helps at all. Uh, but that's fucked up, and I'm sorry that that happened to you. Um, ba -ba -ba. Like, there needs to be more accessible secular. Oh yes, Peyton. I was thinking the same thing. I was curious at how that was gonna go. Um, can we just talk about how exciting it is, though, that these people are openly talking about how impactful um, deconstruction and counseling and like community healing has been for them? This makes me so happy. We talk about this all the time on the channel, but like, oh, bye, Raspberry. Thanks for coming. I just think it's something we should normalize as a culture that healing happens in community. It happens in company with other people and especially shit like this where you're unpacking your whole ass fucking childhood. Um, 
the use of like community just can't be understated. Um, <laughs> am I going to drink after this? Um, not to excess brandy. I mean, I have a cider right now, but I'm probably going to eat. Honestly, I'm hungry. Um, it's hard and I cry all the time. The more I found out it's truly devastating. Ravenheart for you. I'm so sorry. Um, big, uh, internet hugs only if you want them. Um, cause again, you're definitely not alone in that. Um, if my internet could stop freezing, that would be great. Um, Danny, I have no idea what's for dinner. I'm going to have to figure that out later. Um, oh yes, Christine. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just saying earlier cause the internet's, uh, being a piece of shit today. Um, the announcement that I can't, uh, tell you guys what it specifically is about is hopefully something that will help though. Um, a lot of you guys did guess, uh, already. Oh, the internet's not too bad. I don't understand why it keeps freezing. Uh, a lot of you guys did guess already, um, what the thing is going to be, but, um, yeah, hopefully the thing that I will eventually get to announce to you guys uh, is a thing that will mean my fucking internet setup doesn't suck so much, but we'll see. Yes, no baby and no music. Definitely not a baby announcement. It will never be a baby announcement. Um, disentanglement. Yeah, uh, Ginger Duggar with her book and all of that. I'm curious to see what Jill's book look like. looks like. We might have to do a... Uh, a therapy book club revival <laughs> to talk about Jill's depending on what's in it. Uh, excuse. Okay. Um, we have five minutes left, you guys. We are almost done. Uh, we're at 30 minutes and 47 seconds and we're going to press play in three, two, one. Exhausting process. <laughs> All of this stuff that you believed like just got turned upside down and now you're thinking is all new now. Becoming the person that I wanted to be now is a big step in my deconstruction. I put myself through college and then a PhD program. I was like, ah, oh, watch me, watch how much education I can get. I've sinned against God and I cannot save myself. I definitely have changed. Ginge, she's talking about how there was a lot of fear growing up. We followed a teacher named Bill Gothard. The show definitely influenced a lot of people to get into Bill Gothard's teaching with IBLP. And now this is a correction coming back and saying, don't follow these teachings. They're so harmful. Interesting. Watching Jill change to how she is now, it is night and day difference. And I'm just really, really, really proud of her. If you were an ATI or IBLP, unfortunately, a lot of times you have to go through hell because it's not until then that you would risk everything to like get out of those situations. Eventually, you start making your own decisions, like the nose ring that I got. And it's piece by piece, little See? by little, to like do what hell you need yeah, to Jill. like survive. Go, girl. Speaking up is like the last step in kind of deconstructing the Gothard ideology. Hell yeah. We've Same. lived it. See. They made us live it. And we, we have some things to say. Hell yeah. That little voice in the back of your head that says this is wrong, that's right. Don't lose that. You are trustworthy and you can believe yourself. No matter what, God actually Stop. loves you. To cry. a young girl still trapped in that world, you don't have to own any of the shame that anyone tries to ascribe to you. I, I wake up sometimes thinking, this is my life. I made this. I made this for me, and no one told me I could or couldn't. Wow, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to cry on stream. Oh, my God. This is the shit that makes me so excited about doing clinical work um, and being a clinician. Bye, Gabby. Thank you so much for coming. Um, yes, Natasha, me too. Because when you get to the other side of having done this work um, and you realize that the life that you're living is because you put in the effort to make it that way, for it to feel safe to you, to be the things that you want it to be, it's like an unparalleled <laughs> sense of satisfaction it's an unparalleled sense of self-empowerment and it's just such worthy work i know days in blue literally me too um this is incredible and i am just like so in awe and like proud of these people that i don't even know i'm like over here being like so excited for these people um 
Because it is. It's so empowering and it's so incredible. And it also just makes me so fucking happy that this documentary included firsthand accounts from these people to talk about how like, yes, this was horrific. This was awful. This was bad. Never something that should have happened to anybody. And also you can come out the other side of this feeling a sense of safety, finding a sense of purpose that isn't just steeped in shame and fear and and all of the fucked upness of their childhood. I just am so like blown away by the way that these people represented themselves and talked about their stories and like shared their traumas for the purpose of of helping other people um through their own journey you know what I'm saying yes Christine yeah like am I struggling right now yes but I did also work hard to create the good parts of my life uh yes and the thing about this that's so important too is feeling that sense of satisfaction that I did this right this isn't an accident this isn't something that happened to me um that I don't get to own any responsibility or or like the joy for like I am the one who gets to celebrate this victory because I fucking did this and it just is such a meaningful moment and it's like the thing it's like such <laughs> being so real it's like such an, uh, an emotional high it's like addictive um, as a clinician like having people watch uh, or watching people have uh, this experience because it just it's so life-giving watching people like change their own goddamn lives even after they've been through awful unspeakable fucking things um hi Ilya, Ilya, alaya um we're at 33 minutes even in episode four we're almost done with the last episode uh quite honestly thank god um hey all sorry where are we in the show oh sorry i just answered that um i'm lucky to have never had to deal with this just witnessed it a lot yeah a hundred percent um Yes, Raven, it's hard when you lack community, so the interwebs is great for finding new community. Absolutely, it fucking is. Um, no, I've never heard of ex-fundy diaries. I'll have to look at that. Um, I know, and they're getting more education and just changing their own lives. It just makes me so happy. Okay, um, let's keep going. 33 minutes even. We're pressing play in three, two, one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird. The things that I thought I would cry about, I didn't. And the things that I thought I'd be fine are hitting me. Hmm. Anyway, okay. Sorry, guys. When you leave and you're actually out there <laughs> flailing like a new little fish, um, there are people that catch you. The universe catches you. Those of us who experienced the hurt and the abuse watched as people celebrated it on TV and didn't have our stories told. I believe strongly that victims should always be protected. Victims should always be cared for. You're out there, like your story's out there, so you just feel like I'd rather have some say in what that looks like. We had this power the entire time over the people who were hurting us. It turns out, as much as they try to control us, we were ultimately what they most feared, and all we had to do was talk. So I decided I'd use my TikTok. A young, quiverful mom. We grew up in the same cult that and I was raised in this cult. It's just one of thousands and thousands. just read it to you uh it says bill gothard actually i can show you guys the still of it that shouldn't do anything yeah it says bill gothard declined to comment for the series he has previously denied the sexual harassment and sexual assault allegations made against him um natasha yeah the ending was so much <laughs> the best use of social media it really is uh hold on Jim, Bob, and Michelle Duggar stated through their representative, Chad Gallagher, that they love each of their children tremendously and always desire each live their God-designed lives to the fullest. They otherwise declined to comment for this series. What a surprise. Bye, Natasha. Thanks for coming. Clean and serene. True. I think that's the end.
end. All right, great. Wow, you guys, we did it. Um, unrelated, but I just wanted to let you know that I got a therapist into your content. Ah, I love that, Leo. Thank you. That's so cool. That's such a funny, like, full circle kind of moment. Woo! Wow, you guys, I am overwhelmed. Um. I've been painting my nails rainbow for pride and I literally just finished. Nice, Brittany. That was great timing. Goodbye, Mars or Lamar. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh-huh, Sarah F. That was what I picked up also. Um, mm-hmm. Flutus, not flatus. It does kind of feel that way. It was a good ending. Yes, Jen, me too. I'm glad that we got to watch this together because I feel like it made it just better. Ooh. Um... Ba -ba -ba. I know it's a B. We made it. I need to see if there's a website for this documentary so I can follow the people I know. <laughs> Rachel. Um, for what it's worth, if you do have an Amazon Prime subscription, they have something called X Ray. Um, that will show. Um, I intended to do so many chores while on this stream, but I just got some good rest in. Yeah, Lenny. We love that reframe. Okay. Uh, we are going to call it there. Um, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I am exhausted. <laughs> I am emotionally, physically overwhelmed and exhausted. Yes, Peyton, of course. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you guys watching this with me, hanging out with me today, also hanging with me through all of our technical difficulties earlier. Um, as of right now, I don't have a stream scheduled for the next month. I am going to put up a poll on the Patreon probably about uh, what you guys want me to talk about next. I know that there is a lot of requests for <laughs> the queer ultimatum. Um, so I'll probably put that on the poll. Um, but I will also have some fun announcements coming in the next like month and a half, two months. So um, keep an eye out for that. Also, if you haven't watched the video yet today, go watch the video. Um, we talked about sex education and it's the most wonderful and delightful show of all time. So, um, highly recommend, but, um, that said, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you so much. Of course the stream froze again. Um, ba -ba -ba. I know we made it. Um, excellent. All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, thank you everybody. And I will catch y'all on the flippity flip.